Oh yeah, I'll do it. Says you. it's good. All right. But so. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TTV podcast, episode three seventeen. I'm Mesa. I'm Var. I'm Ven. I'm Envy. I'm the XX Trooper. Wait, what is the name order? Oh my god. I'm we almost had it! <laughs> almost. Oh, 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 right oh, it. I didn't it right. see where it is! I was <laughs> panicking! Oh, I didn't post it, we just used common sense. Yeah, how do you not know the freaking have name order at this point? Perfectly without a I name mean, order. Norway, you know? Mm-hmm. Around. Your last, unless Haley is in the freaking podcast, in which case she's lost. Weird, all right. On a TTV podcast for a while, it's just it's been brick food, and there's it's just. Uh, Yes. Okay. (laughs) End game spoilers. If you haven't watched it, leave. Okay. Now that I've said that. Well. Okay. No. 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 Hold up. Now. Hold up. Before we do spoilers, let's give our 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 review of the movie and talk about all, all the things that we liked. You know, without Fair. the spoilers. Okay, it's yeah. Impossible. We'll do, an, we'll, we'll, we'll do an in-depth review of non-spoilers. Total. Oh, dang it. Okay. So I didn't not go see the movie. Go see the movie. Right, now that, that was my uh, that was my non. In-game spoilers. If you haven't um, watched it, leave. Great. Okay. Don't actually count. Yeah, stop, stop, stop. Uh, we're we're gonna be talking about spoilers, guys. Uh, there really is. You no can't way talk, talk about the movie spoilers. without spoilers. It's impossible. Yeah. And you can't even judge it as like a, you know, really a standalone movie because it's the culmination to like, what, a 22 film yeah. saga, isn't it? You just gotta go that see is, it for yourself. Uh, you care all the people yeah. see you. Unlike Infinity War, which you could probably get away with without having all the context of the MCU, I mean, it would be a little difficult, but you could still possible. watch it. This I movie, watch... you cannot. This movie really yeah. does require you to have watched everything to truly experience mm-hmm. it the way it's meant to be. There's a couple of movies where it's especially apparent. Like it's you have to have seen this movie to understand it, but they also reference every other movie in it. So, yeah, this is the one movie where having seen every single one yeah, will absolutely it will absolutely increase your your uh, enjoyment of the the film. It's like a celebration of being a Marvel fan. Yeah, it definitely, it really is. It, it, there's there's just a like a nice nod to literally every movie. <laughs> it, it's really a shame though because of just how successful that the MCU has been and especially Infinity War there are a lot of people that feel pressure to go and watch the latest cool Marvel movie that's doing that everybody's gonna go see so I've seen a lot of people that have seen next to nothing maybe Infinity War at best some people that are going in I'll and seeing right Endgame now, as like the only thing people, it's, a, it's a real shame yeah it's a real shame yeah. This this that movie has nothing for it. you if you're not in 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 nope. the yeah, MC. Like, it's got cool really, visuals. It's got funny. You're, you're way too late in the game. You're like, you should have hopped on the hype train a long time ago. <laughs> and I know like there are some people who label that as a con against the movie, and we'll be talking about that later on. Believe me, but like mm-hmm. you got to understand the context of what you're watching. They're not lying to you. They're not being duplicitous. They're not trying to trick you into seeing something you won't get. The marketing has been very clear. This is the end of a saga. It's like reading the seventh Harry Potter book yeah, without reading every, any other set. All the marketing has promoted, oh, <laughs> yeah, this is the it. 22nd film. Look at all these other movies. Speaking of, it's called Endgame for a reason. Speaking of the marketing, the marketing literally shows absolutely nothing about what this film is. Yep. It's brilliant. They're it's good. so brilliant. They, they, they know really that brilliant. you're in it. Like If, you, if yeah. you're not interested in the MCU, then it's not for you. And the marketing says as much. Yeah. And yep. it, I didn't even catch it that much not, like it's not trying to sell you CGI trickery. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No, there really wasn't, except for cropping out some stuff. Yeah, there, some there are two scenes scene. I noticed that were altered, yeah. but in good ways. Not like a, this character is gonna die. And yeah, it wasn't nearly really as bad as the in, Infinity yeah. War trailer. Yeah, it's I was like, impressed you know, how, how, how accurate we were hyping it was. It up to be. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I remember we were thinking maybe they like photoshopped out uh, Tony, Tony. Or yeah. the, of the line, or that that scene of like you know Tony and Cap, do you trust me? Was like past mm-hmm. Cap, and our Cap was dead. But <laughs> no, hey, 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 hey. we're just getting into the. We already marked it. It's over. Okay. Haley, give him ten seconds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ten well, I mean, we were kind of literally just talking <laughs> to the to them to say like this movie isn't for you if you haven't. It's over. Leave. Yeah. <laughs> leave. Yeah. Okay. We're we're gonna talk spoilers now. So right, please, now please, we, please we, don't we're gonna to talk this. shop mail. It literally says spoilers in the title. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Please don't listen to this if you haven't seen the movie. So so spoilers included. It what was did good. We think of the movie. 
It was really bad. Right, so from the get -go, <laughs> oh man, I don't. I know you focus on that. Go, all oh. expectations were thrown out the window. Oh yeah. Yeah, seriously, but actually. Any sort of this predictions was the... that I had, any sort of theories, well, except for one major one, uh, were basically gone. But the one major theory that I'm very surprised and very happy that it turned out well was the time travel one. Yeah. Yeah, I think everybody kind of had, I mean, well. everybody was kind of aware it was probably going to involve time travel. I've I braced myself. I had no it. idea. <laughs> Oh, the time okay. travel was cool, the comedy of the movie. That was great, though. Like it, it, it was. Look, it was to get the Infinity Stones, but it was all a joke. That was I, all. It was. I want to say this so right great. out the gate. Everybody knows I hate time travel. The reason this movie works for me is because they throw out all the rules of preconceived notions of time travel and other forms of media. They even have that whole scene where they literally trashed the old rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how can I... Back to the future? What are you talking about? How can I, as someone who hates the concept of time travel, say it does or doesn't make sense based on blank if, you know, like time travel doesn't exist in the real world, the only frame of reference I have to compare it to is, you know, other movies or whatever. Yeah. And if those are, are, you know, BS, then there's nothing I can really criticize. They effectively took the power away. They do their own thing, which I respect. Does it make sense fully? Mostly. Old Cap is the one sticking point. Yeah. I, I would say that the time travel here makes the most sense out of any other movie oh, yeah. I've ever seen tackle time travel. Mm -hmm. I, was, I, was, I, I said this before outside of... Um, I'll fight you on it, X. I really will. I will. <laughs> I, we will have a time travel fight. I, 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 I said it before outside <laughs> yes, of... Um, the podcast, but I I feel like this, if time travel were to actually become achievable and it were to actually be like a real thing, this is exactly how it would be. I feel like yeah, it, it it seems the most realistic way of time travel happening. It is fictionalized, but, but it's grounded in like real theories. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's grounded in real theory. And it makes a lot of sense. Um, the only thing like Nessa mentioned that doesn't really make sense. With the rules of time, the time travel they establish is the Captain America scene. That's the only one where I'm like, ah, I can't but quite wrap my head around it. It sort of makes sense, but then I'm like, no, but then how would that be this kind of thing? So, but it is cinematic and cool though. It like, is well, cool. And I will say it doesn't make any sense, moment. but I, I, I did like that scene nonetheless, even though I just, eh, it was a great know. scene. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's just, oh, okay, cool. See, I don't it's know. It's heartful. like this movie. Mm -hmm. It's not driven too much by logic necessarily, but is definitely what what everyone's going to this movie for is the heart. This movie yeah. does a really great job. It makes so many callbacks, so many references, ties up so many loose ends that from uh, previous movies, it it does its job incredibly well. And from the it's get so go, you don't know what to, what will happen. Mm -hmm. Like those first couple minutes of the movie, they're like, all right. Let's go get Thanos. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> interesting. The, the first couple of minutes of the movie is what you think the whole movie is going to be. Like, they yeah, yeah. go and fight like... Thanos, and then they freaking beat him in the first yeah. 10 minutes. <laughs> There's nothing. It's just hollow. I, it, I... It, it leaves you thinking, like, oh, geez, well, what the, what the heck is the rest of the movie? <laughs> yeah, because like, oh, yeah. I, I, I walked into this movie thinking, like, the first hour is going to be them prepping. Yeah, like, that's what I thought. Get everyone together, and then they're gonna go get Thanos, and that was it. But no, they did that within the first ten minutes. To... Freaking Thanos gets decapitated. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, I thought he was gonna beat them when the first time they yeah. showed. Like I was I was expecting them to go like pretty early, but then they get beat, and then they're like, "Hey, let's go back in time." Not. Yeah, I thought they were gonna get their their butts he's, handed. He's to like, I destroyed the stones, die. and then they figure they have to go. It was back a complete, now. you know, flip of how everyone had predicted it would go. But did, did Thanos just not care about his well-being after his goal? No, so he's no, like, no, oh, he, I, no, yeah, no, he, he, that was he, his whole reason for living was destiny. accomplished. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because it seemed kind of weird of him just uh, like, yeah, oh, no defenses, no more. nothing. He just no, he, he didn't care. He got well, what he wanted. He became a farmer for a good. <laughs> a little yeah. Bit. So yeah, yeah there, there was making the soup. There was two reasons as well. Like there was the fact that yes, he he at that point he had completed his goal, so the putting up a fight really didn't matter. And also, he was like basically already on the brink of death after destroying the stones. Um, he was really weak. Like if you know, if you notice, his hand is is shaking like uncontrollably as he's picking the fruit, and he's limping up the stairs to get into his hut. Like he's barely hanging on. He's really. Yeah, he was weak. pretty toasted. 
Yeah. Yep. So he, he really couldn't fight back even if he wanted to. But I mean, like if you look in that scene where they go to the past and past Thanos is watching himself get executed, even he doesn't care. He's like, that's destiny right there. Destiny's fulfilled. <laughs> he's like, yeah. yeah he, he, <laughs> he's like, he said that? That's dope. Yeah, he smiles. <laughs> he smiles at that line and he's just like, yep, that's destiny fulfilled right there. He, he's happy to see himself get executed. He's like, that's, I did what I needed to Such do. A good villain. What a guy. Oh, yep. my gosh. But you know, yeah, everything with Thanos, everything within the movie, it all pales in comparison to the true villain of the movie. Listen, Noob Slayer 69. Keep talking, I'm gonna find oh, you in Noob Master 69. That's gonna, the dabbing in the Thor Fortnite, was, that's, that's, tragic. that's gonna make it age like milk. Here's, here's the thing. So Thor, Thor is an interesting part of the movie. Um, and I... So I, I think he's probably going to, for for me. I understand this one the most out of anything to criticize about the film. I think the handling of Thor in this film might be the big thing that's going to be really divisive for Which people. people. Are pissed off about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah a and, lot of and, people. Are, <laughs> it, 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 it is uh, of the few like pissed off like rants that I've seen. This is the one I understand completely. I get okay. it. I it, for me, it didn't bother me like literally at all. I, I loved it. Yeah, I thought it was I great. Um, what, what, actually, I, I, I didn't love it. I didn't think it was great. I, I, I would have preferred to see better Hulk or better Hulk, better Thor during the um, the film, but it just didn't bother me. I got what they were doing. It was a funny gag, mm -hmm. and it made sense for the character. So at the end of the day, didn't care. You know what? What, but, what was it? Someone that needed an existential crisis, and I think the what, one who, who would have got the most. people not, not like? About the Thor thing, though, like the, what the is fact it? that people don't like that, that cool fat. Thor. Cool Thor has been reduced yeah. to fat hobo drunk Fortnite playing bum Thor. And not oh. only that, not only that, but like he is that for the entirety of the movie, even in the final battle, where he's still <laughs> just fat drunk Thor. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, he, he can't. Like, he can't really like exactly. The bumble like, has pass. to be enticed to the movie, enticed to the team for beer. He trash talks Fortnite players. Like, uh, <laughs> Fortnite, the Fortnite in 2022. It's not that it's not funny. It's people don't like it because it feels out of place in the movie. Like if this well, was in Ragnarok, maybe it would be fine. But well, it's, I, I, it's in, out of yeah. place. This it's movie, not, there's not, time I, travel. I, 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 I think no. it's more of a personal thing. Like people yeah. got so attached to the bad. Uh, bad Ace Thor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, What's the Bad War. Ace Thor? You know what it is. The I'm one sure. that we saw from I Infinity War. The one that came down to really cool to Thor. Wakanda. Thor was very cool. Was like, bring me so Thanos. Cool. Like that. Bring man. me that Thanos. Was, oh, in love yeah. with. I and, then, and, I, and if th if Thor had been the same Thor, then Captain getting the hammer would not have felt as satisfying. Well, that's the thing. It's like that Thor wouldn't have fit in this movie. Like he yeah. he's there. He's in the movie for like the first ten minutes. Mm -hmm. It makes sense for for thor to be super cool and stuff the first 10 minutes when they still when he still thinks he has a chance to save everyone yeah. and go beat thanos and right. stuff but once he cuts off his head and then there's five no years hope. Go, goes yeah. by it's like what's the point there's yeah now, now he, can do. he missed his chance He's failed yeah, yeah. And so and that's why that, that's why I don't think it's out of place it makes yeah. complete sense for thor to be like yeah it's a logical a step for his character the only the the reason people don't like it is is it's really simple it's they they like thor as a character they like seeing thor do very cool things and to see their favorite character reduced to kind of a joke the entire thing is upsetting especially for the final mil the final film in their and favorite I feel franchise bad because i loved thor in the last two movies i love thor in Ragnarok right. and in infinity war so seeing him like this yeah it was it was kind of like heartbreaking in a way. But yeah, that's the point. It's like it's supposed to be heartbreaking. You're the, supposed to see all these heroes broken down to and to yeah. Some, uh, but th thankfully, Thor isn't my, form. Thor isn't my favorite character, so mm -hmm. I'm able to kind of look at it from a yeah, this makes sense for the character and it works in the film kind of thing. But if if he was my favorite character, then I too would be kind of disappointed that for the very final battle of his like whole like this whole series he was just a kind of a bumbling idiot the whole time at that, least that, it gets that's kind of lame like, has a cool like viking look yeah, yeah no, no, very, like, Brady I, I, I did i did yeah. like how they were able to make that yeah they kind of made it made him like a really like a bad ace like um <laughs> <laughs> like a uh, god dwarf looking thing it was really Dual cool. we all like stormbreaker <laughs> yeah 
it was very, I mean, it was very, it felt very like Nordic. Yeah, God that TV. was hype. That was super I mean, hype. He definitely looked more like a classic depiction of an of a Norse god. Yeah, that's what I was which thinking. Is what I really like, appreciated. That was I, I feel like if Thor as like the god legend was real, that would be more in line with how he would actually be depicted mm-hmm. than the Thor from Infinity War. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well, yeah, the, the, the big beard and everything that worked in the very mm-hmm. end. Then I, I, f- I don't. His beard was so round. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a big cotton ball. <laughs> I, I just yes, felt like a lot of it was uh, a lot of it was very like sort of parallel, I guess, to Odin or like sort of a reference to him because of the way that when he goes to back to Asgard and he he tries to tell Rocket give Rocket an excuse for why he's running off. He like talks about like the Asgardian wine or whatever he's got that he he wants to go and drink. Um. I felt that was very like similar to like um, Odin hmm. in a way. Was so, Odin a drunk? Uh, no, I mean it's just more like figure, figure wise. Okay, fair enough. I get you. I mean, I, I think I think there are definitely some comparisons to Odin to be made because um, uh, at the end of the movie, he's also once he passes on the kingship or the the um, rulership to uh, Valkyrie, he's staring out pass like this green field into the ocean very similarly to Odin. Yeah. He uh, also passed on his role to, to Thor. Handy. Um, and it helps that he also now looks a lot more like Odin did as well. Um, so I, I think that was Which an intentional... Think, man, what kind of stuff did Odin go through? <laughs> <laughs> well, not nearly as bad as Thor. Kids are going. Yeah. A lot of war. O- Odin was also a failure though. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, it is very parallel. So. Yeah. Thank I think you, the other thing Super with hype for the Asgardians of the Galaxy volume. <laughs> yeah! Three. Asgardians of the Galaxy. Oh I'm so God. glad they actually said it. <laughs> Dude, Thor is such a bad Asgardian. <laughs> no, bad oh, Ace. No. Bad Ace. He's a bad Asgardian. Haley. Oh, Haley, it's bad Ace. God. Bad Ace. Bad. What is Ace bad reference? Ace. It's, it's, it's not. It's not a reference to anything X. They're trying to avoid it's, saying the yeah, word. Yeah, just a replacement. Ace. Okay, I see. see. Bad as Guardian. So five years pass. The Avengers have failed. It gets real. It gets super sad and depressing. It's like that opening scene. The opening scene alone was just as soon as you see the bow and arrow pop up, you're like, "Oh my god, you're going here!" Oh yeah, dude. You're going here. It's great too because literally everybody knows what's going to happen to them. So like, yeah, the the second. Oh, by the way, by the way, guys. So like. My first, I, I've seen the film twice now. The first theater viewing, it was in a really small auditorium with a lot of people who obviously didn't care about the MCU, which makes sense because I bought that ticket last minute. So yeah. everybody in that theater was also people who bought the ticket last minute. Mm-hmm. So they weren't that investment. My second oh, viewing, though, I, it was a giant auditorium, IMAX, completely packed with everybody dressed in Marvel. Like, that is like oh, stuff. Oh, Dang. Oh, I saw so many like uh, like jumpsuits and like costumes and stuff. It was great. But the second that Hawkeye scene like fades in, the second you see Hawkeye with his daughter, everybody in the audience is like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knew what was about to I happen. Was, you know what's so coming. I was excited to like cheer during the Marvel logo in the beginning because I knew it was coming, but couldn't. the way they introduced it, you just couldn't. You sad. couldn't even cheer when yeah. the logo came up. Yeah, because yeah. like, that it, was the thing that threw me off as well because I didn't I, I didn't realize yeah. that the movie had started because it was so sudden and I, I just did and it didn't occur mm-hmm. to me what point what time that was until the thing happened because like you right. said Vardy, it was the super obvious what was going on yeah. I had no idea yeah. when the, the moment his kids started being cute I was like yeah they're gonna die, <laughs> they're all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> you want mayo or mustard Can't yeah you? the, the <laughs> you asked mayo or mustard Dust. I was like don't man they're but, dead X, I, I would say like um a lot of people figured it out because one Hawkeye wasn't in the last movie, but also yeah. two because he's featured heavily in the trailers and he's very clearly he looks like he's very pained and has gone through some stuff, mm-hmm. uh, which kind of gives the implication that he had to have lost his family or something. He lost someone, Venom, but but then we open the film with a shot of Hawkeye as he was in Age of Ultron, not yeah. how he was in the trailer. So this was Hawkeye's best movie, by the way, in terms of uh, just focus, oh, yeah. screen time, 
cool mm-hmm. moments. They like finally give him a lot of good stuff. Dude, it was just about everybody's best moments in this. True, movie. Like, fair, that was fair. one of my complaints about Infinity War was that for some of the heroes, we didn't get too much development or time with them, like Captain America and Black Widow. Yeah. And I don't know. Mm-hmm. But in this movie, everybody got a moment. Flip everybody got a focus, oh, especially yeah. Cap. And I'm really happy to if, see how that went. I know this is an Iron Man movie, but dang, did Cap get close to stealing like the the narrative? You had some him. of the best payoff. He, oh, he did, I, I, this was definitely Cap's movie when it comes to like what he did, but it was an Iron Man. I, I would say this is equally both of them. Yeah, movies. I felt yeah, like they both had a lot of screen time. Yeah, I think they they this is a great send off for both of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. with the way the movie ended, it's definitely still an Iron Man movie. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he had a, a funeral. Well, I, I would say, there. can we talk to... about how expensive that last shot was? Oh, in the yeah. funeral? Yeah, when just, it was just, just to get everybody, everybody, there. everybody yeah. there. I can't even imagine how long or like the, the planning it would take just to get well, that one shot. Whatever it was, they made their money back already. What a budget budget meeting plans. Whatever it takes. I was I was honestly <laughs> probably I was honestly surprised at their their drive to get literally everyone back. I was not expecting to see Natalie Portman in this movie. Yeah, I thought she was right. done. I did. Yeah. I I I did. I was blown away when she was there, and I was like. Did they CGI her or something, or is that an yeah, extra yeah. or something? Yeah, I wonder. Just if like that a close-up like shot of her, right? Gwyneth yeah. Paltrow, Robert dude, Redford, dude, the dude, and then at the at the end of the film, she's in the credits. I'm like, wow, they actually got her back. That's yeah. crazy. She was at the premiere too. She was. That's I mean, not in a very yeah, big capacity, really good, like, but she was there. We're in the final movie. The narrative only allows for so many people, but the fact that they had cameos and like mm-hmm. references to honor the past. That's what's Jarvis. Really sure. Okay, yeah, you, you talk about this one. So I'll give context. Yeah, we Tyler accidentally Hello. went on the Shield Reddit before the movie, and he accidentally got spoiled that. There was going to be a character from a TV show in the movie make a cameo. That it wasn't it Shield. From Shield. So I was pissed off for yeah. like two days. So we're like, uh, is it going to be one of the Defenders, like turning to dust? Like, what could it be? And I'm like, well, if it's a time travel movie, they might have a cameo for Agent Carter. And the only one from Agent Carter that would make sense is Jarvis. Because yeah. it would make sense for like, you know, here's the real life Jarvis. For wow, like, so you before. called it. I called it. Yep. So when he popped out of the car, I literally looked over to Ty and I was like, I totally <laughs> called yeah, it. Like, jumped, totally she jumped out of her seat and I was like, all right, fair. <laughs> Which, yeah. you know, I can't be mad at it. It was a fair reference. Uh, I, I, I actually, I really like that scene too because even if you didn't watch Agent Carter, you get it. There, you know there's there's, a, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of people in the audience who don't know mm-hmm. that Jarvis the butler was the inspiration for Jarvis the AI. Mm-hmm. So seeing that was a really cool moment for a lot of people. I'm yeah. sure it was a they didn't full see them. circle. Yeah. Way back to Iron it was Man. a very well done little bow on an already fantastic scene, mm-hmm. and it does mark the first ever um, movie TV. You know, I, I had zero movie. idea about Agent, Agent Carter, Agent Carter the best but TV. I thought it was a good touch. Like, I was like oh, that's cool. Like, yeah, I thought, I'm like, it, I thought oh, cool, it's Jarvis. Really I had nice. no idea that that was the guy. I just thought, yep. isn't that the Vision guy? Nope. No, no. It's not even it's actually, is that not? It's no, a it's a different actor. It's not, yeah. it's not the same. Oh. That, mm-hmm. So cool. that's, that's what's the, I, he he sounded like him. So. He sounded oh, like him. That, but yeah, that, that's I, because the, the, uh, Jarvis the AI Vision's Jarvis the AI, um, and Jarvis the AI was based off of Tony Stark's memory of Jarvis the Butler. So they're yeah. similar, but they're different people. Oh, okay. They're played by different people, but yeah, they, they are. The they are voice? played by different people. Even the voice on no. um, the Iron Man One, Iron Man Two, Iron Man whatever is a different person than the person who actually plays Jarvis yeah. in the TV series. Well, because yeah. like, because it's not like Tony Stark was able to extract Jarvis's voice yeah. and apply that to his AI. He just the reason the you AI think they sound similar is because they're similar like Jarvis. local archetypes, of, like the Jarvis. British butler kind of. Yeah, the yeah they both had the butler. British butler Jarvis accent. Jarvis is also the most badass character in Agent Carter. <laughs> oh besides, my gosh. Agent Carter. He's amazing. Well, those, I have never watched it though, so those are all right. He's, he's a great getaway driver, I'll just leave Point being, they use the time travel scenes to not only make a lot of really good homages to Marvel movies, but Marvel TV as well. Loki and Jane Foster, you know, mm-hmm. Alexander Pierce, Crossbones, everybody. It was really, really good. The elevator scene. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh that was hilarious. <laughs> that was hilarious. I like that. I thought that was funny. I was like, ah, I watched the movie. I know what he did I was there. Totally that elevator scene. Fight. 
that elevator scene is how Ryan Johnson, please take notes. That's how you subvert <laughs> expectations. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so good. We were little, expecting I, a fight, but we got a, even Everybody better. in that theater was thinking he's about to say the lines, about to say the anybody want to get off or before we begin anybody <laughs> want to get off or something like that no it was such, le- the, such a perfect setup mm-hmm. he leans over and he's like hell i tried everyone was like <laughs> oh! it works <laughs> it works dude my <laughs> my theater he went nuts he has like the smirk <laughs> oh so good it was so good and they they framed it exactly like they did oh, Winter yeah. Soldier. Dude, then, then he goes and fights himself like <laughs> <laughs> I could do this all day. Yeah, yeah I, I, know. I, know. I know. That's, a, that's America's <laughs> ace. That's oh, America's oh, bad oh, ace. So good. Bucky is alive. <laughs> if what? I thought he was going to kill him, but... He's like, why are you guys sitting, going out of your way to center yourself? Blame LJ. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. This is a family, <laughs> family friendly podcast. Family friendly podcast. <laughs> well, yes, I, I meant it seriously. Even though, like, like, if you're watching the the, the great irony is if you're watching this podcast and you saw the movie with the language, that was this in the is movie, more filtered than in game. Like, yeah. It's more filtered than in game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Captain America was like TTV is well, more filtered than a Marvel. Captain America film. swears as the title drops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, oh, well, let's get to that show you the difference wit. between uh, Whedon of Captain America and like Russo Captain mm-hmm. America. Accurate. Yep. So they, they do the whole time travel thing, and there's a lot of good stuff in the time travel sequence, but there is, like, some weird elements, too, like Nebula, and mm. imagine how things could have been different if they had just sent someone else besides Nebula. Like, we talked about this off-podcast, they kind of just got the short end of the stick with who was left, but mm. I just like to imagine if they sent Nebula with Thor instead and sent Rocket with, um, mm-hmm. with Rhodey, we wouldn't have had a third act. <laughs> Yeah. It was just because they yeah. got unlucky. It didn't make sense yeah. for like Thor to like. I guess I I didn't feel like Thor was was good place where he was because because he was just so was nervous and everything. He was to, supposed uh, to be. Well, used yeah. So that was yeah. that was supposed to be the plan. Yeah, but it just I mean it, it's it, I think it just I mean just bring someone else. And they I just think speak. with like the quantum GPS. They just ba- basically said you have to go. You have to go to somewhere that you've been before. Yeah, more or less. That you're familiar with. Yeah, yeah it, it make it makes sense assuming that the plan is followed. It's just they didn't like Thor is just kind of he screwed the pooch there. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, so I it that message is right. Like it doesn't really make a lot of sense. To, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's time travel. Nothing makes sense with travel. Well, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have sent um, um yeah. Natasha and uh, and Clint yeah together um to the Soul Stone. So it was only because we, as an audience, know they have the most potential for interesting. Uh, yeah, interplay. right. That, that, that's where you kind of think meta. It's like you can't really help but no think meta. Had no idea what they were walking into for the Soul Stone. They didn't know that's that so... them going together meant that one of them would have to die. They didn't know that. Yeah, and the yeah. The, the annoying thing they is that Nebula die. does know that, and she obviously didn't tell anyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was. I still think that's strange. Although, Tony could have mentioned it. I mean, Tony would have been slightly aware. Because he was there for when they're they're binding uh, Thanos on Titan, mm-hmm. and he's and she says she explains to Quill about how he went to Vor- Vormir with Gamora, and then she didn't come yeah. back. Blah blah blah. That's what enrages Chilicon, Quill and screws them uh, over in that part of Infinity Chilicon War. Chilicon says in the patron chat, "Does Nebula actually know that?" <clears throat> None of us have rewatched Infinity War recently. The verdict verdict's still out. We had a mini conversation. I think yeah. he has. He no, 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 ha- she has some idea. Yeah, I don't I, think she I, fully I knows, but. She figures it I, out logically that I, I did. I did best. watch Infinity War, and like she doesn't know the specifics of how Gamora died, and she. I doubt that she knows that you literally have to kill someone to get yeah, the stone. He, she literally but, goes. Thanos goes to place with Gamora. Thanos leaves place with Soul Stone with, with no Stone Gamora. and no Gamora. Yeah. So she she can you can kind of put two and two together. It's weird that she does she doesn't mention this to. Yeah. She could have said something about how like wait a minute the last time someone got the Soul Stone, <laughs> my sister died. Wait no 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 no. <laughs> she does say this. I lost an eye. What? She no does? she she yeah she does mention this. She she says this during the meeting and Ant Man literally follows it with not it. Oh yeah! yeah. So yeah, what, they just got, right. there's idiots then? Oh yeah! No, they probably just got the 
No, I, I guess they probably Nat, just, like, they Nat wanted to go together. And they yeah, just, Nat and Clint just yeah, offered Clint to do it. Volunteered, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, th- I think they also hoped in a way that they wouldn't have to go through with it because yeah. you see them sitting yeah, around that, and like trying to talk him into it. giving the stone. Yeah, that was such a great scene. That was a good scene. That was Dude, some, yeah. Our, I I didn't even know at this point. I went in knowing that one of those two was gonna die. But Somehow sure she reasoned that out too. And then so we got to the scene and I'm like, who's gonna die? Who's gonna die? I think it's gonna be Black Widow. Oh no, the the slow motion's got to be Hawkeye. Oh no, it's gonna be Black Widow. Uh, when, the, when, that, when, when, when they agree down, about it, I figured. It makes more sense for it to be Black Widow. Yeah, it does make more sense because of Hawkeye's family. Yeah, they had Hawkeye that had up. something to go back to. Black but Widow's story. It, it would have been cutting him off yeah. too short in the movie, I think. It, overall, yeah, since yeah. he hasn't been represented in the Avengers yeah. films that much, I didn't think they would cut him off that quickly. Just yeah, it makes sense for the emotional. I watched Iron Man two yesterday, where she first comes yeah. out. And I like whimpered at the first scene that she <laughs> yeah. like steps into frame. I'm like, Good times. Oh, I'm gonna miss you. Better and times. Your oh we got my movie. gosh! We got a movie coming out soon. <laughs> yes, she, the amazing prequel movie. I think she, had her, was gonna be a prequel. she had her best like Black Widow outfit in this movie than she's had in any other movie. Oh, it was awesome. The hairstyle was... really worked too. Dude, yeah, and like yeah. the braid, yeah, with, like the, the braid the long was street. great. Dude, she mm-hmm. looked amazing. This is the best look she's had. I love this. Oh, yeah. Is her main hair color red then? Like, yes, her yeah. hair color is red. So oh. she was just like, I-, I want it white because. Well, no, she did. She, 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 she yeah, she yeah. she dyed it blonde because they were on the run from Civil War because they, oh, they were yeah. fugitives. Oh, that makes sense actually. Okay. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for I did see something. Through the right. beard and looked all nasty and stuff. Yeah, like, so I remember that. At the same time. I mean, like, on weird. the one hand, I'm very happy that uh, that Hawkeye lived. On the other hand, as uh, to quote a friend of ours, Solaris Magnus, or a friend of mine, <laughs> Hawkeye two time back to back. I was supposed to die, but someone else did, who didn't even get a funeral champion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 do, I do feel like Black Widow got, got <laughs> short end of a stick because it feels like there's yeah. some cool backstory stuff for her, but she never got her own movie or anything. She's about to. She, oh, she's she's, going she's to. getting one. Yeah. She is. Finally gets her own movie. Now. Dies. It's a prequel. <laughs> they're making. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I guess. Like, like literally, what you were just <laughs> saying, they're making for her. <laughs> oh, okay. We, on the one hand, we already all kind of assumed it was going to be a prequel because it was going to be in her spy days. On the other hand, I just kind of feel like they, it's, I wouldn't say disrespectful, but it's just kind of awkward to release it finally after people have been wanting a movie for her for over a decade. Mm-hmm. The after year after her. she dies, yeah, yeah, it's like I, I, I agree. It's it's, it's a weird time. A prequel as a bittersweet send off. I would imagine so. But it's like Sola. Yeah, but they, 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 they would, I have they no would family. Not no, they, they would not. They would oh, not do that to Scarlet, man. Solo then. Huh? Uh, if I was Scarlet Johansson, I would be so bad if they finally gave me a solo film and I wasn't the one starring in it. Yeah, that, that would be BS. I, they, 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 they wouldn't. Well, she'd be like so going. young. It'll be her. Wouldn't have Scarlet. It'll definitely be her. But it's, yeah, dude, do some Scar- de-aging. Scarlett Johansson so looks young as heck, though. She, has, she like, walks n- into the screen. How, in that how movie, old is Scarlett it's now? Such a big cheer. It's be uh, cool. She's probably in her thirties. Yeah, probably. probably. Yeah, or, I guess. Let's see. Scarlet. Maybe maybe late twenties at most. Oh yeah, thirty-four. She's looking great for thirty-four. What? 34. Dang. Six years. Six she years. She was still 40. in her twenties. That means she was practically a baby and. In... Uh, Iron Man one. That's true, but dude, she looks she looks amazing for thirty four. She hasn't mm-hmm. like she hasn't aged well. Okay, she does look really really young in Iron Man two, but literally every other movie she's looked this the same. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, so now nah, they they can absolutely still cast her and make it work. I I will I'll believe just, it. Just use that de aging technology. She can younger really actress. Um, Why did so, um... Hawkeye lived? What X? Before we move on to something else, why well, one thing? Um, I don't. I, I'm not 100. percent Okay, I watched this movie today, but oh, still, my head is kind of all over the place. So I'm not 100 percent sure whether or not this is correct. But they came. Okay, okay. Clint came back, right? Yes. And mm-hmm. he talked about like a mysterious figure, like a red skull and everything. Yep. I was very much expecting Captain America to to react to that and just be like, yeah. 
And I mean, he just didn't. we know that he goes back later and meets Red Skull. I know it wouldn't have worked narratively with the movie, but it would have been cool to see that reunion. Yeah, I, I was <laughs> really expecting there was to, to be some... Like, coming from um, Infinity War, I weirdly was expecting that there was going to be some sort of, not direct interaction, but something with just Steve yeah. Rogers and just be like, oh, Red Skull's... Mm -hmm. he's would it, would any of them recognize him, though, to tell Cap about it? No, but if the... How many well, people out there are a Red Skull-looking guy? You yeah, know? but would, <laughs> would Cap well, really they, they, believe that, though, if he was... Would he make that the connection? Implicate, the implication... Well, I, I would think he would, because Cap did see him get beamed up after touching the the stone, so fair enough. Um, but uh, the, the the implication is that it, um, Hawkeye explained it to them off screen, um, because he um, he he brings up the red guy again when they're talking about bringing Nat back, and he's like, "Well, why don't you go ask the red guy?" As though he's already mentioned him before. So I uh, I, I think they did have a conversation about it off screen. Yeah, I see. I see. It's also, probably... why. It's probably just one of those unfortunate things where they had more important things to worry about, and because yeah. the Infinity Stones aren't going to be a part of the franchise, they're never going to run into Reds. Well, maybe. Never mind. Because if the Infinity Stones are... They're not, no, going, no. They're not going to do the Stones again. Yeah, yeah, no. destroyed. yeah that, that's over. They're destroyed the return <laughs> to the timeline. No, yeah, yeah, they're, they're back where they were, but they're not going to go back. And they're present. It's, their Stones are destroyed. Also, on, on the subject of Hawkeye, Clint, whatever you might call him, the, the biggest surprise for me, except for Hulk dabbing, the biggest surprise to me in the entire movie was just like, oh, this character looks really cool. It's like a ninja and stuff, jumping around, nope. got a sword and everything. Who <laughs> is this guy? This must be a brand new character. I've never thought there was something like this inside of Marvel. The sword looks really neat, even though it doesn't much make sense. And it's just Clint. I was like, what? What? what is and then that? he has <laughs> that, that, he that have... one Japanese line that he says. Why does why is it big on swords now? Like, well, what's the he, deal with that? There, there's two schools of thought. The first okay. is that he adopted the Ronin identity because Clint Barton had a plea deal with the government to not be Hawkeye anymore, in exchange for you know freedom from prison. They mentioned that, and he had to adopt this secret identity to not be put in prison. While oh. he's mur while he's murders people. The other theory is that he's <laughs> being an edge lord. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, ah, oh, I need to, I need to escape. Family's dead. I, I don't want to go to prison, so Dude, let's just kill people he becomes, with a katana. He becomes Samurai Punisher. That's all it is. <laughs> no, it becomes Ronin dead, from Ninjago. He becomes Arrow from Arrow Ronin Season 1. Ronin from Ninjago does not kill people. <laughs> I don't know. I just heard the name Ronin. Ronin I have from absolutely Ninjago nothing. That Th Thanos <laughs> took half of all Ronin life in Ninjago. Other than his name. Ronin he from Ninjago stuff. doesn't do anything. Steals lives. He, he doesn't steal lives. He doesn't kill people. He just steals scrolls whenever he feels like steals it. Steals scrolls. Yeah. And barters with teenage ninja. Now, look, I'm going to steal the scroll of, of your life. Yes. All right. <laughs> I like. <laughs> I liked the Ronin stuff in the movie. I just feel like number one. It lasted too short. They bothered making like this accurate costume for him, but he was just back to using the bow and arrow like yeah. immediately. And, he used a sword one. Other and time. secondarily, it felt like they were trying to do kind of like what the Marvel Netflix shows do with the dark and gritty kind of uh, kind of atmosphere, but the choreography just wasn't there. And by it wasn't there, I mean it literally wasn't there. Ninety percent of it was off screen, and the ten percent that was sucked. Um, I mean, so <laughs> the scene really like held up by you know its own merits of you know the rain, the emotional aspect, whatever. But I couldn't help but think while I was watching it, if this was a Netflix, there'd be a Hawkeye hallway fight, <laughs> and we'd be <laughs> raving about how good it is. But all right, like, all right, it would have been really weird. Out of place, place. yeah. A yeah. End game like, extended totally. cut just for you. Bro. Everybody gets like yeah, everybody gets like the nice like meetup reunion like. <laughs> Like mm -hmm. three minute scene, and then Hawkeye gets like a five minute, eight minute like <laughs> battle through the hallway. Like, what? That'd be like a minute and a half. <laughs> just something that doesn't involve him like just trading sword strikes Iron with this Fist dude awkwardly. Like one time. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, who's that? Yeah, okay, okay. I, I just realized though that um, Rhodey, he finds the gang, the Mexican gang members that. Uh, Ronan yes. cut up or whatever, and he's like, "Oh, this is gru like he talks about how gruesome it was, like how brutal Clint <laughs> it was." And then he goes and he fights the Japanese guy, and then he does like next to nothing. 
I mean, I guess I guess he stabs him. It has a kind of like cool uh, camera where yeah. it, where it lowers, like, but it no, doesn't he show anything. Slices him in the still. stomach twice. Yeah, yeah I mean, like he slices his throat. He, he and like dunks on him. him. Yeah. yeah the only reason I mean, like it doesn't show it. Brutal. It doesn't. <laughs> it's really brutal. No, no, but it doesn't <laughs> show it. That's all. It doesn't show it. That's all. Literally stabs him. It doesn't show it. That's all. I'll give you anything. At least you know what he um, yeah. I guess I, I honestly kind of. I like the outfit. Part, it was cool. But, um, yeah, the one scene. Yeah. Can we talk about Professor Hulk? Okay, that Dabbing, was funny. Yeah. I loved that. Yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. My, it was freaking hilarious. My friends but, and I were dying the whole movie. <laughs> there's something that there's something like very uncanny valley about how they did the CG in some scenes. Some things was perfect. I mean, the later half of the movie, I had very few complaints. But in the first half, when he was, like, showing up wearing glasses and clothes, I think the problem I was having was hearing Mark Ruffalo's voice coming from this CGI yeah, monster. Yeah, it was right. kind of... Un- yeah, it was kind of weird at it first. Was jarring, he, he, but... He kind of had, like, this really sheepish voice jarring, when he first so... starts talking. It was. Yeah. Um, it, it definitely gets a lot better when he stops wearing the glasses. Mm-hmm. But, what do you think Woody dabbed mess up? Did you like that? I audibly groaned, but also <laughs> chuckled at the same time. It was very funny. <laughs> I loved I love Hulk's character. Date it, 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 movies it, for him to dab. Yeah, in 2022 that, slash 23, it makes sense. In this movie. Seems good. He's just like a chill Fortnite dude. In yeah. Like, that's that's a sin in itself. <laughs> he's, he's he goes in to talk to Thor. He's okay, the Haley, don't, 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 put, don't push it. And I, I, like, I, I imagine that, being in 2011, and you're trying to explain to someone, yeah, in the later movie, Hulk just talks to Thor and tries to get him to become a superhero. <laughs> right after dabbing with kids. <laughs> it and actually makes sense for them to still be playing Fortnite since half the population died. It, it, it's unlikely that yeah the if, if there's not a, a lot of progress in general pace. it seems yeah. like there's not a lot of social oh, progress really since then point. wait a second so last time the <laughs> Earth saw hulk, <laughs> last time the earth saw hulk was in age of ultron when he was a menace who destroyed like a whole town and killed a bunch of people only reason he escaped punishment was because he left earth and then half um, the earth in got civil like... war in Civil War, Ross was like talking about it. They were still like, you know, hunting him down, and like Ross is at the funeral, so he's still active in 2023. Um, do they, are they fine with the Hulk just like being in society? I mean, yeah, it's been, with kids. It's been five years for him to make half the government's for it, gone and now. Also, yeah, five years of yeah. him being in prison. <laughs> I mean, well, before travel. Hulk was a monster, and now he's not. So, yeah. like, I think good luck to make Ross that. <laughs> But he would have made a really cool cameo. Do, do you I mean, think Ross definitely seems a little? little... He was. Who is Ross? I don't know who. The... I just think the the guy from Friends. Thunderbolt right Ross is or, yes, Ross, Ross from Justice. Friends. He's the dude who was in Civil War as part of the government. I think he was the Secretary of State who introduced the Sokovia Accords. But he showed up before that in Incredible Hulk, and he like he hates Bruce Banner, and the Hulk with a passion because like he wanted he you know to be with his daughter. For, like the longest time. He hunted him down for like years and wanted to put him in prison at any cost. And now he's just like dabbing with kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he's a menace guy. to society. Send him to the slammer. I want to fixate on like a very small, pointless detail because I'm irritating like that. And that is just that they're playing Fortnite, all right? And in this universe, Fortnite is yeah. canonized. But inside Fortnite, Thanos appeared. <laughs> That is really no. dark, you know? Yeah, well, no, no, no. It's like, hey, we have this video game. This guy wiped out half your friends, probably your entire family, but you can play us in Fortnite. Man, Epic Games is so insensitive. What the heck, guys? What the heck? That was the perfect opportunity for Core to be playing as Thanos and just have That's a really good point. That is really... That's really weird. How How does that work? That's kind of like a Don't very... talking to him, but you think Fortnite was just a game? No, Fortnite was life. <laughs> it was a life simulator. It's kind of the same thing as like in Sil- or in Winter Soldier when Captain pulls out his little like notepad and he sees that Star Wars is crossed off. Yep. It's like, so did you notice that Nick Fury was a Jedi? <laughs> did you make that connection? So you guys think yeah. that's weird. They they reference Disney in uh, I think I- Iron Man one or two, one of those two. There's like something about um, 
an event going on at Disney Hall Walk of Fame or something like that. All right. It was on TV. So Disney exists in this universe, meaning Fair they enough. have an MCU. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> That's some really weird meta paradox territory. The, we're the, the, the MCU in the MCU is the defenders. It's like all the speed of superheroes. Good movie. It's just a TV show <laughs> in the MCU. Cap watches Luke yeah. Cage. Yeah. I guess that was the deal that uh Epic had with uh with MCU is that hey, we can have Thanos appear in our game, but then Fortnite has to appear in the last movie. The that just, well, that <laughs> seems. I mean, that seems like a win-win for Epic Games, and not so much. I guess. For... Yeah. Yeah. So seems like an epic when deal I was to me. Out loud, it was just kind of went like. Eh. That seems very one-sided. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's there's, there's probably some other stuff for going on behind the scenes. So. Seemed would have been ten times worse without Korg and Meek, though. <laughs> if it was just Thor playing Fortnite, yeah. I would have probably hated it. But they got a cameo in with those guys. So yeah, it was uh, only good because of Korg and Meek. I, I wish oh, they had the, been the in the more, British but that was good. Guy? Yeah, yeah. The guy New Zealand, him. New Zealand, really wish... New Zealand rock guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New Zealand was it? I really <laughs> liked him. So that's you as an MCU character. <laughs> oh, oh my really? gosh. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I'm a rock totally cool. guy. <laughs> I'm a. You're I'm a rock, rock raider. Rock uh... Yeah, let's go. <laughs> You've been speaking about Ragnarok cameos. What about Valkyrie being Valkyrie? Valkyrie. No, but I felt like she was so underrepresented. Oh, I mean, I guess until was, the final but, like, fight, she but really have a role in the, yeah. in the franchise. She's very so far. similar to Captain Marvel, where she had her roles and she was awesome when she was there, but she just wasn't in a lot. No, which I'm fine with. Putting her in the movie more yeah, would have been cool, shoehorned. Right? It, it would have been it would have been hard to juggle <laughs> that in, but it was kind of a bummer. Yeah, I I, I like cheered every time Valkyrie showed up. And also, can we talk about how Captain Marvel was barely in the movie? I yeah, I, I love that wow, part. Haircut. Hair oh boy, I, like I, I love the haircut. Can I, I, I ask? Was, that was a nice I, 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 I did a lot better than I thought it would. Yeah, same. Mm -hmm. Like I, I didn't really see Brie Larson as being Captain Marvel when they first casted her. Like she didn't really look like it to me in my head. But when she got that haircut, I was like, oh, oh, oh is that closer to how it originally was? That's her. Like, cause they filmed Captain Marvel after Endgame. Okay, yeah. So I, I someone, someone brought this up at UPS. I was wondering this too. That's like that like, doesn't make sense. Her hair is short in Infinity War, and her how hair is she, long in real life. Like, was she wearing a wig the entire time? Was it, she, was it CG? Like, was her hair? It might have been CG. It wouldn't have been that hard to do. <laughs> cause she wasn't in it yeah, a it's lot. It's just hair. It's yeah. just and hair. Yeah. What they yeah, did but, was they like, probably glowing uh, filmed the all of her hair. short hair scenes very, mm -hmm. very early on. And then they allowed her to grow her hair well, out a little bit. So I don't know. I would. I would say. I. Best. I mean. I was watching some uh, behind the scenes stuff. Did she ever have short hair earlier today? Soon? They. They could have just had a motion cap, uh, bald yeah. cap for her. Probably. They, they oh, could. They could have yeah, CG'd yeah, yeah, the yeah, short you're hair. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. So, Captain Marvel did not work yeah. for me whatsoever. Like I, I'm open <laughs> to people who like Captain Marvel, but the, the the issue that I had with Captain Marvel is that. Within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I feel like a lot of characters across all these movies, even though I haven't seen all of them, they've mm -hmm. kind of justified their power or and their respect and sort of. And I feel no. like, and I, I don't know much about Captain Marvel, but from my understanding, she's kind of like the Superman of Marvel. Like, she's super powerful, etc. But I feel like she just kind of came in and just like, hey, I'm better than all y'all. And this, well, did you see the did you see the Captain Marvel movie? I did see the Captain Marvel movie. Okay, and then, I, yeah, I had the That's same exactly feeling in that movie as well, and I just you and most people. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, and I felt like they could have done that really. Well, I feel like they could have done that character really well, but it was just kind of like, hey, feeling was my concern with her, especially in this movie. I wanted them to go the route of her, like having you know an arc of some kind in this movie, or Thanos like nerfing her with the stones. They didn't go that route at all. They instead instead decided to barely put her in the movie. Which I kind of she respect because this isn't her movie. She's basically in there as a glorified cameo, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, she exploded with next to an engine, and then she says she's busy all the time, <laughs> and then she just comes back. Uh, yeah, I felt yeah. like she. Did. I felt like it was just convenient, quote unquote, convenient that she came back at the perfect time, like in the yeah. middle of that fight was. But at the same time, 
I understand why they didn't want to make the movie all about her and like having her grow and change or whatever. Yeah, I, I feel like her powers might have made the movie a bit too easy if she had been through it the entire ride. Um, would have. Yeah. So that's probably and why they like kept her out. They, because everyone was like fear mongering, you know, that she was going to beat Thanos. It was going to be <laughs> terrible, but she did. She she fought him, but he actually fended her off and he, she didn't yeah. live the final blow. Her main <laughs> purpose really was to help set up the movie. Like she, She's the one that ended up bringing Tony Stark back to Earth and then bringing all of them to Thanos. Yeah, and I respect that. Just, that doesn't that does not give her movie a pass because the criticism still stands. It just now falls onto the sequel to fix her, which, fair enough, I should have never really expected the Russos to fix her while doing so much as well. <laughs> So, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just. Yeah. I just still have so many questions about her in general and what the heck she's been doing in space for like 20 plus years. A lot, lot of other like, planets. She's appa really apparently, she can't. She didn't know about Thanos. Apparently, all those years, but she was aware of Ronan because she was a Kree. But um, <laughs> she didn't take any time <laughs> to stop Thanos. Like man, the, their well, plot could have involved. They, 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 in 2014, well, they could have uh, summoned. The Honda, but you could show up for this one. <laughs> <laughs> this Mar this is the only emergency. I thought her usage in the film was um perfect for me. Like I, she, yeah. I, I I didn't I didn't want her to be in it any more than she was, and I didn't want her to be in it any less than she was. She had the exact amount of screen time that I thought was mm -hmm. like the I perfect think, usage yeah. of her, and she was okay. used effectively. Like her power set came in at the perfect time. And it was used really well. She wasn't too OP, but at the same time, was very obviously yeah. the strongest person there. Um, <laughs> I thought they did a good job of balancing that. Amazing. Strongest. Is she Avenger. supposed to be like a? Is is being? Is she supposed to be like a a cocky character, or like is she supposed to be like playful? I, I never I understood. Uh, what well, her character I, is really supposed to be, but the it, Captain it, Marvel movie leads me to believe that she's kind of like a stoic, yet also kind of like. Um, sassy kind of character. Yeah, yeah. I think her she, independence sassy, leads to some, yeah, to some degree of cockiness. But yeah, she. I think uh, they're definitely intentionally making her cocky. She's very like that, that. That is that is a flaw yeah. of her character that I think is yeah. going to be addressed. I just wish that they made her justified because I feel like she could be a very. But for me, that is like that is strictly well, just, just my opinion. Uh, I feel like they should have made her more justified the way she did things, the way she acted, except basically. Well, well, I mean, in in terms of her cockiness, it's justified because she obviously yeah. is the strongest person there. Um, but powers. But justifying her power set is one thing that I just don't think that's what this film is for. No, that that oh, would yeah, be no. a complaint for her movie. And honestly, like it's no yeah, different that, that than any of the other wrong. BS. You know, characters get powers because random crazy event. In comics, you know, like Electro becomes an electric god because he fell into a vat of eels in Spider-Man. Uh, you know, forgot like my birthday? <laughs> that, that is absolutely <laughs> not how it goes in the comics. So. Fair. Well, point being, they do dumb stuff in the movies. Carol becoming a god because the cube engine... It wasn't even the Tesseract. It was like the engine made from the Tesseract like exploded and went into her. Is kind of weird, but I don't necessarily disbelieve it any more than i believe wanda becoming a witch because they experimented on her in hydra yeah. it doesn't really make a lot or of it's sense like dark matter lightning ah, back. hits the forensic side oh, hey, you know, he's, he's time travel yeah <laughs> um i do think that you can have crazy powers even if they're not justified so long as you find appropriate weaknesses mm -hmm. and carol right now has no weaknesses I wanna, that, 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 that's what I was getting at. Is like, I, I, don't, I don't think that this movie is the movie that's going to justify her powers. No. And I don't think it should oh, have no. been, nor do I think it needs to be justified at this point in time. It's going to be the sequel that's going to justify the powers. Okay. I, I, it's, I, I do believe that her cockiness right now is part of her growth as a character that they're setting up. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, th this will be addressed, I believe. Yeah. Okay. I hope so. She'll meet a, someone I... that will best her. Yeah, she's gonna meet someone that's gonna kick her butt. Oh yeah. And it's gonna it's I gonna do... put her in her place. It's gonna humble her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think that's I what they're want... they they got plenty of years of her life to work with. Right, exactly. <laughs> I do want to explain the whole like um like what I mean by the justification thing is just that I as a viewer and what I've seen 
like not getting on, into the technicals as, as their powers design. I can't just putting her um, like on on the same level as Thor or Tony Stark, etc. Just from what I've seen, like that's that's what I mean by justification. Yeah, that makes any fair. sense. Does that make any sense? Or mm-hmm. just... I get it. Uh, oh, it makes sense. Just from what I've. Maybe He's Thor, but character. like I don't know about Captain. America. Or I don't know about Iron yeah. Man. I would connect her most with Thor because Thor started kind of. Thor, Thor is literally a god, so I can understand how like being like, yeah, I need some justification to explain why she's stronger than him. I yeah. get that. Mm-hmm. Iron Man is like Iron Man. Iron Man's the dude in a suit. I think so. Not in. Thor's been nerfed a lot. Not in like second uh, is this me? but in, like I've seen. Whoa. You know, what about X? I don't know. Kid, uh, X. Like, Really? X something. What? Your your mic is kill. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. Oh, yeah, my... that... you Robo X has joined the call. Welcome back, I music. destroy humans. <laughs> X say I've got strings <laughs> and now I'm free. Events... Oh, I've got string me. <laughs> why, why do we exist Whoa. just to suffer? <laughs> All right. Uh. I'm having. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Avengers Age of Extron. I'm down. Oh no, now he's... X, you with you back with us, bro? Am I? No. Uh, yeah. Synthesis no. complete. Uh, well done. Uh, <laughs> peace, X. Let me try, try changing the server. Well, unless that's going to screw up the recording. No, I don't know. It won't. Okay. Hello? Uh, you, you talk crap about Captain Marvel. Now she's gonna get her revenge. She's torpedoing you. <laughs> <laughs> Say something real quick, X. Hello. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, you, on, it's on. Yeah, it's end, gotta. It's gotta be oh, you yeah. and your mic. I, you have to figure out what's going on. I think you're done, dude. I think you're done with this episode. You might unplug your mic, rejoin the call, do whatever you can. Yeah, we will. We will carry on without you. Um, no, he can be our we'll time travel specialist. We can. We can still do it. It'll be fun. Here, I'll, I'll play dumb with time travel well, when we get to it. Mm, great. Mm. <laughs> we're we're, so, we're about an hour in now. Yeah, the other things to talk about really is just the final act. Yeah, we've pretty much done all this setup. Let's talk about the incredible, amazing, beyond final phenomenal battle. payoff. Hey, oh, X. there we go. Wonderful. Welcome back. I'm good. Yes, yep. you're good. You beat. Good. You beat her. <laughs> That's crazy. Let's continue. So, can we? So when the final battle started and it was Thor and Cap and Iron Man versus Thanos, I remember thinking. Cap doesn't even stand a chance. Like he's just walking up there he's with the like dude. amazing kicks and like flips and stuff, and he just takes him and throws him. Like, there's no way. Dude, they... It's the power Until of Mjolnir. America's ace. <laughs> Until Mjolnir. <laughs> Until Mjolnir. <laughs> and then suddenly Cap was a legend. I thought it was Vision. I 100 thought it was gonna be Vision. Why do you think it was out. Vision? Because Vision's the only other one who's picked up the hammer, so Vision I thought was it dead. was gonna be. Yeah. Oh, Vision's gone. He unsnapped though, so I thought Vision maybe. didn't get snapped. <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah. It was... <laughs> I just didn't he know. Got his head snapped. He got Dude, sh- oh my god. Blooshed. Guys, so the snap the unsnapping part. I they the mm-hmm. way they did this was so brilliant. Yes. So like they 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 brilliant managed story. to do the snap, right? Mm-hmm. And it brings everybody back and there's like this moment that was where so hype. They prove it with Laura. They, yeah, there's they they prove it with a call from Laura, right? But they only dwell on it long enough for you to confirm that you know the people sure. that yeah. That it that was killed were brought back, but mm-hmm. the genius thing that oh, they do is that they immediately shoot down the the tower. The oh, moment yeah. you make that realization, they do you it in that. time that you forget. Yeah, that yeah. All the heroes from Infinity War were also part of the snap. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. then later in the fight, when they come back, it's like. <gasps> Oh, oh that's right! Yeah. Yeah. I, I oh, lied yeah. a few that was times, and I hype. said, "All the portals the snap worked." Like, yeah, where is everybody? Why are they taking so long? <laughs> What's going on? Like, but they're they're alive, back. right? Yeah, Dude, but, so it didn't necessarily work for us. Time. But most then they people, had uh, some like amazing shots. You got the, the oh, trio: the Iron Man, Cap, and the Thor silhouettes. walking up to uh, oh. Thanos. Yeah, but, they mm-hmm. start fighting me, and do I, all the combos. Cap facing the whole army by me. Shot, I that the, shot the, right boom. there. Cap the shot, the shot where amazing. Cap is walking. Yeah, walking to yeah. the army, and it's yep. just mm-hmm. him facing off against this mm-hmm. entire 
like with half a shield with half it was that was a beautiful beautiful oh, i i could have that as a painting so on my wall and that yes. that's the thing from the comics they were dating an homage to right where like Thanos yeah, is victorious the and the only mm -hmm. person to stand up to him is cap and mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's kind of what they were adapting oh, it was yeah. cool and then hearing oh. sam come in on oh, it was so cap, good. on your left dude yeah it was so good because like <laughs> it's like that the line happens and i'm like huh mm -hmm. that was is, is that is that is that who is that is that Rudy? <laughs> What was it? And then it's like, Falcon! It's Sam. it's Sam on your left. And I was like, oh, that, oh, that moment was such God. hype. So that hype. last final you see, battle. You saw one portal open, and it's like, oh, snap, they're back. But then you see all the all other the portals. portals. <laughs> the final Sorry, battle was not like, just grand and scale of choreography, but it had like a billion references oh, to other yeah. movies, like Spider-Man's instant kill mode. <laughs> yes. actually, yeah. um, and, Black, and Black Panther knowing Clint's name. Giant man. <laughs> it was like, yeah. Giant man. There's Austria actually a, a weird thing about that shot that actually kind of... It, so when the first portal opens and it's uh Black Panther and mm -hmm. um the uh, cool, yeah, sure, yeah. Look, uh, there was that scene actually kind of creeped me out in a weird way. Yeah. Um because they're coming through the portal and there's like no like music or anything playing and they're mm -hmm. walking really slowly and ominously and I look over mm -hmm. at Shuri and she's like so thin mm -hmm. and I look at Black Panther and he's also kind of thin. So it kind of creeped me out. I thought they were doing like a like a these guys are kind of zombified or something for a moment. <laughs> that would have been cool. Uh, I think what they were trying to do is just like uh, this sense of disbelief, like the impossible mm -hmm. happening. Yeah, yeah. But you're I, right. I, it was, I it get was definitely a little unsettling. It, it was yeah. It was, it was it was really unsettling the first time I saw it. Oh, huh. so the yeah. afterlife almost no comment yeah. they, were, they were just stepping in from yeah. Wakanda now I have like after every single superhero movie that has come out I can honestly say that that final battle was the most comic book movie I've ever seen yep. before yes. yeah like, what do you it mean was by that screaming comic book like the shot where they're all running together like every single hero that was every Hannah, single and Avenger Avenger in flying, in one shot was yeah. giant man, man and then it was it was just it just felt like a comic it was the book. ultimate fan service and the, the positive spider-man Spider slinging mm -hmm. off of mjolnir while holding the infinity gauntlet <laughs> and <laughs> landing on a pegasus with mm -hmm. valkyrie like what <laughs> try try spoiling that for someone be like yeah right <laughs> imagine imagine traveling back in time to 2008 and going like walking in front of the screen at the end of iron man one right and being like all right everybody i'm glad you enjoyed this film guess what in in in, in 20 years you have this to look forward to or yeah. you know, 11 years whatever um you have this to look forward to and he just like plays a clip of Spider-Man <laughs> swinging from Mjolnir, <laughs> grabbing on the Valkyrie, running with the Infinity Gauntlet as millions no one would believe or it. Just, or just show the one shot of everyone coming together right before Avengers Assemble. Like, that no one, one would is it. like, this is what... Avengers Assemble. <laughs> he finally said it. Grabbing the hammer. He said it almost like relieved. Like, <laughs> yeah, it could be I finally done. get to say the A word. Final. Avengers! Assemble. Assemble. <laughs> I kind of imagine, like, after saying that, everybody in the back of the army is like, what? <laughs> what, what do you say? <laughs> yeah, but if you, you, have to speak, you have to speak a little louder. What? Everyone oh, 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 we're going. Oh, we're going. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. There are so was, much anyone with any I had a very theater reserved quiet. theater. <laughs> My theater wow. was so awesome, dude. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I got to tell cool. you guys about this whole experience. This was the best uh, theater movie theater experience I think I've ever had. Same. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Same. First, same. my friend and I, we show up three hours early to save seats for the rest of our friends because there's no reserved mm -hmm. seating at this theater. We go and we're panicking. We're like, oh man, yeah. we took so long to get ready because I'm packing a bunch of stuff. I'm packing my laptop with Infinity War on it so we can watch <laughs> it while we wait in line or whatever. We go, there's no traffic. And so it's like, okay, cool. We go into the theater there's nobody there. There's like hmm. maybe a couple people there. So we're like, uh-oh, everybody's in line. We go upstairs. We go up all the way to the theater. Nobody's there. Hmm. We see where the line is supposed to be, and there's no one. So we go, and we sit down, and we're like, sweet. We're the first ones in line. This is great. We start setting up for the laptop and everything. Security guard comes around. We're expecting her to say something like, oh, go away or whatever. <laughs> but she goes, she goes into the theater, 
she comes back out and she says, you know, you guys can just go inside. There's oh, nobody in there so and nice. it's all clean. Oh, it's so like, nice. Nobody was watching the previous movie and we're like, what? We're thinking they're running Avengers or t uh, testing it or whatever because we heard screaming and stuff. No, <laughs> turns out the, the last movie that was playing was Hellboy. <laughs> So we go into the theater and it's completely clean and we're like, okay, I guess nobody wanted to see Hellboy. Sweet. Correct. <laughs> we get the seats that we want. We set up. We put our jackets all on the other seats to save for our other friends. And we're like, cool. Awesome. I set up my laptop. I have a portable speaker. We get Infinity War playing and it's great. Uh, our, our friends start showing up later on and we, we start getting snacks. More people start showing up. But the theater doesn't really get filled up until maybe a good, uh, the last 45 minutes until showtime. So it was crazy. We didn't have to deal with any any trouble so or anything. Nice. One of our friends brought up a concern, though. Like, oh, mm -hmm. one time I tried to do this, too. Or I got my seats early, and then later on, a security guard asked me and my, my crew to, to get up and go back in line. So they might do that mm -hmm. to us. Just a warning. So they're like... Ooh, I really hope that doesn't happen. The I would fight somebody. <laughs> I would. I was prepared to fight someone. Like, no, we got here three that hours would, early. Yeah, that would be seats. complete yeah. BS of it. Yeah. yeah, but I believed her for a moment because that did happen. I remember. I think that happened to me before. I don't remember yeah. for what movie, but it did sound familiar. So I was like, I was clinging on to hope that because it was the security guard that told us we could go in, we'd be okay. It'd be okay. Yeah. 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 And lo and behold, people start pouring into the theater, and we're like, "Sweet, we we're we're good." Very and nice. Then, <laughs> halfway through Infinity War, that we're watching it on the laptop, a bunch of people start taking seats right behind us, <laughs> and they start joining in and commentating with us. No way! <laughs> it great. Yeah, it was hilarious. There's a guy in front of us who's like chatting with us about Marvel stuff, and then mm. we're going through the whole movie and. Uh, I turn around at one point and it's like it's like that part in Biocraft where all the Onu Matorn are right behind Takua <laughs> oh, nice. he's done talking to Wenua. There's just a bunch of people crowded <laughs> up watching <laughs> behind me. And it when when Aku turns around and sees all the Onu Matorn yeah. around him. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> then finally uh before showtime a little bit before showtime a security guard comes up or not a security guard just some guy that works in the theater he comes up and i'm thinking he's gonna tell me to put the movie away because ah oh, crap here we go again yeah so he comes up he stands in front of where i was <laughs> and then he says something and i didn't catch what is what he said so i pause the movie everyone's completely silent all the talking stops the, the movie stops so it's dead silent and he goes is that a laptop? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's a laptop. And he goes, wow. And then the speaker too? Like, that's awesome. That's a good idea, man. <laughs> and, like, Thanks, man. <laughs> and then immediately everyone behind me starts laughing. They're that's all, great. Like, start applauding. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Very speaker. nice. It's great. He goes, that yeah, that's awesome. Food. Oh, man. You guys have fun, all right? And I'm like, Thanks, dude. Gotcha. And then we start playing the movie again. <laughs> That's awesome. Then the old fan. As soon as the credits have finished for Infinity War, I put the laptop away, and as soon as I stuff it in my bag, the movie, or it was it, the preview start. Ooh. Dang! That's great. Then! Then That's with the great. timing. Then it was the timing. nuts. I turned my friends, scary. I'm like, all right, now that we've finished Infinity War, and then boom, like something starts <laughs> going on. <laughs> I turn oh, all my friends are like, oh my god! <laughs> <What>? <laughs> That's so awesome, it was dude. Great. And then uh the movie goes on, there's all these great reactions, everyone's oh, yeah. cheering and applauding and reacting to all this stuff. And mm -hmm. oh, it was it was amazing, man. Very like, nice. Man. This is a movie theater you want to be in a theater with everyone who wants to cheer too. Yeah, like, you, you really do, man. Like because yeah. I, I, I saw it twice, first the first wah, time wah, wasn't wah. Like, really cared. I'll Second never... time, though, it, it enhanced the viewing I'll never have a vocal so showing. Nope. You know, um, you want to know what had the most the most cheers in the movie? Well, Kappa no. Mjolnir. No, no, surprisingly, it was not that. the The one scene where literally everybody stood up and started like clapping and shouting 
was when Pepper Potts came down in her rescue yeah, armor. Really? Huh. Yeah, everyone in the theater cheered at that. I was surprised. Well, that, I was, was that the female that scene? That was so that was... No, not, not the female scene. Go women. women. It, it, I mean, was it was certainly a hype moment, but... It was, it was just the moment when she saved people. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised. Like, a lot of people really liked that scene. I love the very shot big of to, like, Iron Man and... One. I love the shot of her and Tony kind of like yep. teaming up and yep. doing the Unity beam thing and all that. Yeah. Like, oh, I mean, I think I probably would have liked it more if you know, if Pepper Potts the last time she had done anything remotely like <laughs> combat related was, I am the Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, probably, probably may have left a, a better impression on me. But the one shot where she and Tony are just like back to back, like firing yeah. at the thing. Oh my god, it was so, it was so was cool. So Can we talk about? No, the big, the big death. That got the spoiled by me by some stupid guys. No, yeah, no. So that kind of ruined the entire. The movie. Wait, wait, wait. What's oh. what? this? This football player <laughs> on Twitter spoiled it for about thousands of spoiling <laughs> this movie for yourself. It would have been if you spoiled this movie for yourself. Number Listen, one, you're a horrible person. It's not 100 everybody's fault. Yeah, there, there, there are people, there are people going on really? a campaign to spoil it for people. Yeah. Yeah, but if like, you, there if are. Don't do that. It's don't. Just bad. Yeah, don't spoil it. And well, if you are looking to spoil yourself, don't do that. Well, either. no, the people that spoil the movie don't care, though. They love yeah. making people mad. You can't. You're they, not going to you know, dissuade they're them. They're the at most this pathetic point. human beings ever. Yeah. Someone made a comparison to say that like, they are like people running around popping balloons. Yes, <laughs> that's that's pathetic. Pathetic. Yes. What do you have? This to say is to how me? stupid this spoiler thing went through. Is that people? We're pissed about Luna's Hal being nerfed, so any video say. talking about that has just been, like, they've just peppered every video talking about that spoiling Infinity War in response. In the comments? In the comments. Oh, on yeah, any people video. Don't, yeah, so people don't wait. Know. So people on are any... pissed off because a Destiny gun got nerfed, so they yeah, spoil so, in-game so, in the comments? In the comments, yeah. That's how because stupid Because they're mad? Yeah, because they're mad. So Dude, people are spoiling to... it for any reason. Oh, yeah. It had nothing to do with Marvel. That's yeah. how stupid that is. Oh, wow. People like yeah. that. Yeah, so I, yeah, that I, I avoided the comments for any video that I was watching. Yeah. I deleted yeah. all I my managed... social media until the day. I didn't watch oh, yeah. anything. I couldn't stay off Reddit, it. and yet all I got spoiled on was Jarvis. <laughs> I got out everything. That, though. that would have been and... amazing having him just pop up without even realizing there noticed. was going to be a cameo. Well, I would have noticed. Fuck. I've been like, I'm so yeah, but you're not him. That's Jarvis. <laughs> the crazy thing really... is, this movie is so chock full of spoilers that if you mm -hmm. get spoiled one thing, it, yeah. it might not be that big a deal. Like you could still probably enjoy. Except the for the big death, because yeah. the big death That's is the one thing you say. really don't want to be spoiled big on. Death, yeah, big death is the one spoiler <laughs> that that will mess you up. <laughs> Even though, if you're listening to this, Carter <laughs> Wellington, if I. I ever eat you, <laughs> meet you in America, I will kick you in the, the ball sack. You know, in the, in the ace. At all. In Fair the enough. ace, that too. It's going to be stuck in there for like at least 10 hours. That's how <laughs> oh. You missed the first time, but then the second time you got both of them. <laughs> you should have gone for the head. Oh my god. Uh, no. Actually, Tony's for Var. Oh. Was master masterfully done. Oh, yeah. I, I really do. Um, I. Well, there's just a big thing for me in movies because I love being surprised and I'm always like kind of like, oh, it's going to happen. Now. So I love being just like, even though that big, uh, big uh, Tony like thing was was big for me, like it's just kind of spoiled a lot of the movie. Nonetheless, I'm really glad that I got to see the beginning of the movie without being spoiled because like like we said earlier, like the, the opening thing of just Thanos dying, that that was still incredible. That was cool. Yeah. I like that because yeah. it averted expectations. Mm -hmm. So I still got I still got the oh like yeah I, exactly there's the cool things didn't get spoiled like, yeah there's still things in in there that I enjoyed yeah, that I didn't get hammer. I was just pleased a lot of the thing. theories didn't happen like I remember Var going yeah. back and forth he's like this is Cap's movie to die no wait no this is Tony's movie to die. No, wait, this is totally Cap's movie to die. Pictures, yeah. Cap finally got his dance! <laughs> I mean, I... I, I know, I'm I, 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 I oh, yeah, I know, I know, I mean... 
technically i was that right was yeah like, yeah technically nah, but yeah, it. technically both of the characters were retired yeah it's not characters. just one or the other yeah, it's I, both I, it's both. at no point was i saying that cap is gonna die i was always mm. like saying tony was i the one that i died. wanted cap be, to die but be, because because, to. because of the way that because they... it's the russo brothers the russo brothers have directed every cap movie uh, besides uh his first one so it was like if they want to kill someone no but he did think tony was gonna die at the start yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah I, I was wrong about that. I'm just saying, like, technically, I was right about who I thought was going to die, and my reasoning yeah. for it was pretty sound. Look, the, uh, the reason I why knew I knew Tony I kinda was going to die, and even I when it happened, I, I was still shocked and in awe and shook. Well, I was shocked by how it happened, kind of but I, I kind of reasoned out who was going to die because I knew both of them were going to be taken off the board, if that makes any sense. But, you know, one of them was going to retire, and then one of them was going to die. And right. if they had Tony retire and Cap die, then the universe would have an endless supply of Stark tech because he wouldn't stop inventing, even if he retired, you know? Anybody needs something, they can just go to Tony and hook him up. He can hook him up with some sweet new gear. But with Cap the one retiring, he can only exist to give advice, and no one's going to seek that advice because he's done with being in the movies. If Tony lived, but Robert Downey Jr. was done in the movies, then people would always ask, why isn't Tony helping with blank? Mm-hmm. So well, they'll, they'll, they'll come up with some permanent. new excuse because, I mean, Wakanda's making all those outreach centers and all that stuff, so they're definitely going to be sure. sharing more. They'll be the tech. new tech people. Yeah. yeah, they'll be the new Tonys. But for now, this this made the most like narrative yeah, yeah. consequences. And yeah, also the line. Can we just talk about the line? What line? What line? I, am. I, I, I am Iron, Iron Man. Man. Oh. <laughs> that was that was the only thing he could have said in that in that moment. That was his. Was those beautiful. were. Yeah, Those were his, it was amazing. It was words. almost his dying words. Yep, I he said Pepper Potts very, very quietly. Last words here. Mm-hmm. Dude, I, I was so was... sad too. Like after, I after the fact, after he snaps and he's just, he looks like yeah. he just blew up a nuke in his hand. Like he's, mm -hmm. he's completely beaten down. He's, he's all the gamma radiation. He's roasted. Penny <sighs> oh my gosh, X. <laughs> How like dare you! Single word. It was so sad to see him in that state. Yeah. yeah. But then Pepper goes up to him and, re and reassures him. Mm -hmm. Oh I, my god, that that part really broke. I, I, yeah, yeah, dude. I, I so I, I don't usually cry in movies. I I've <laughs> noticed that I'm doing it more recently. <laughs> I, I found I found that like movies are making me feel more emotional. You're getting softer, bar. Than, yeah, I guess so. But you like I've I've only ever like had like a single tear kind of thing, you know. But for this movie, like I, I freaking cried at that death, dude. <laughs> that was really like emotional. That like oh my gosh, and, definitely it, powerful. It, it was it was like um I I technically cried like five separate times, but it was all like rapid fire. Like I cried. <laughs> And then, like, as I'm getting over it, something else happens, and I'm like, nah, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> the closest I came was Morgan asking for a cheeseburger, and uh, that, that was one of the moments. Hogan saying, "Like, I'll make you a cheeseburger." What was that yeah. referencing, though? But when, when, Tony that, start, when Tony when Tony comes back in yeah. Iron Man One, he asked for a cheeseburger. Oh, first oh yeah. Thing he wants. He doesn't the hospital. Like, he doesn't want to think about the press wants, conference yeah. and a cheeseburger. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that now. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's kind of a reference to like a personal thing with the Robert mm -hmm. Downey Jr. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that that made him go through. Yeah. yeah. That so that's, the that's... the cheeseburger thing made me cry. The the proof that Tony Stark has a heart thing made me cry. The mm -hmm. funeral yeah, itself yeah, made, me made me cry. cry. You love um, me, or I love you 3,000. I love you, I, I love you 3,000 made me cry, and then Pepper saying, uh, you can rest you can now rest. made me cry. Yeah, Kids, you can rest it's, now. It's, too, it's, it's a shame that... If kid in it, you knew. Yeah, it's, too bad that, it's too bad that it's too bad that she got stuck she with her mom, because she only loves her in the six to 900 range. Yeah. <laughs> got him. Got him. Feels bad. I feel... I was waiting for um, the Doctor Strange moment, like the entire thing, the one in a the 14 million was it or something? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I was really, I'm a bit iffy about the logic here because there's there's a couple of issues that I have. I do understand it's 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 a movie. You you can't really nitpick every single loophole that you see. Well, you can. And, People. Love well, it. you can. Oh, you and, can. And I, I will because I am that kind of person. But and also when we looked at Doctor Strange with Tony Stark, I was. And he would point his finger up. I thought he was gonna. I thought. I thought he was just gonna be like Tony Stark. Look up, man. Look up. And I, was, I was waiting for him to look up, and then he did. I thought that too for a second, but no. yeah, I was like, what? What do, you, what do you mean? And I felt that moment was was kind of underwhelming. In that, like, I do understand that 
like Tony Stark dying obviously is, is a huge thing, but they kind of been juggling this all over the place in this battlefield. And, you know, mm -hmm. one of these uh, wizard guys could just open that orange portal and just stuck that in there and then just somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I, and I thought the logic behind the stones or whatever was that, like, you have to be, like, super powerful or whatever to, to do the thing. So Tony Stark could do the thing, right? And he's just he's just a regular guy, except for his, like, heart, like, I, on on. Mm -hmm. A base sense without his suit, right? So couldn't anyone? He's snap just the a guy, huh? Yes, anyone could have done it, but they would have died. Yeah, but correct. Tony Stark also Tony Stark also died. So it yes, was... correct. Well, I mean, so... that, but that's that's why no one wanted to do it because yeah, no it was about who yeah. was willing to like lay down the sacrifice. Okay, for. I don't know. It fe I felt like it should have been a bigger thing. It was it was more just like hey. T time to do the thing now. Like it's available to do it all times, but now we're well, having I mean... eye contact, and you should do it. Right well, now. The, the, well, the, the, impl plan. the implication that I got was that Doctor Strange was confirming to Tony that this is our one shot. This is it. This is the mm -hmm. moment. So that's why Tony does it. Otherwise, yeah. like mm -hmm. he would have kept I, trying to do anything. The original could. plan was to get the stones as far away as possible, and that's why Captain Marvel was gunning for the car. Yeah, yeah. And, but but the once car, that failed, the, the car got destroyed. Then it had to be someone yeah. else. Yeah. So now the, the literally the only solution was to use the stones at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I guess, but I just I can't help to feel like you know Clint had it down there. He could have theoretically, in theory, well, he could. Have that's just what I was saying yesterday. Like, like, Clint, like, Clint had but, it when the time machine was still around, though. The plan was to get it to the yeah, time yeah. machine. And also, did that huge ship go through the portal? Yes. 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 But, Somehow. <laughs> and it didn't. And I mean, they never what? noticed. And they never noticed okay, that what, it was what? destroying their facility on the way out. I, yeah. I was just confused was like, by that. I was like, it looks really. And they didn't do anything. Nah, I don't care. Yeah, I, I, th I thought I thought Amy was dead too. When that thing went down, when the <laughs> exploded, yeah, I, was I thought like, oh, I so know. Dead. I was so like, wait, a we, bunch we, of a bunch yeah. of heroes just died right there. Hundred <laughs> oh, yeah. percent. Well, well we yeah, they all the live. The thing really is, because cool. um, it took a while mm -hmm. to muster up the strength to actually do the snap. Like Hulk is just a super powered gamma radiation being. It took him a long time to even concentrate enough to snap and it screwed up his arm in the process. Tony, the suit was probably what bought him just a little extra time. Anybody mm -hmm. else may have even died before they could have yeah. even done the snap if there's a regular person. Yeah, because... Captain Marvel could have done it. But not yeah. I don't think Hawkeye could have Cap physically withstood it. Captain Marvel and Thor are the only people who I think would have been able to do it. Um, and survive. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, and survive. But, like, just a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I also subscribe to the uh, the notion that Tony Stark's suit was the reason why he was able to actually snap his finger. Otherwise, had he not had that, he would have just died immediately. Oh, yeah. I do I do feel like they should have just jumped in the orange portal and just get out, though. <laughs> I do. I do Maybe. That, send that send Thanos to Antarctica. Yeah, 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 and also the Ant-Man could have done his deed as well. Okay, no, no, I just, I just realized you had it, man. The true mission. Yeah, man. Like, Doctor Strange could have literally just opened a portal and they... No, the see, no, you see, but Captain Marvel destroyed their big, Thanos' big ship and, made, and it landed in the water and threatened to flood the area, so Doctor Strange had to <laughs> stop the flood but from happening. But did you see how many Thank other you, wizards were there? Like, it, like Wong could have yeah, done Yeah, appara like, apparently not. There. Nope, nope. Doctor Strange had to do it. He had to take care of Cap oh, the problem well, see, that Captain for, Marvel when, caused. When it, it, was in, it was in whenever, his... Uh, in his whenever uh, things like this always come up, it's the same thing to me. It's like, yeah. I mean, yes, they could have done that, but you gotta understand that we are thinking about literally every possibility that they could have done yeah. after the yeah. fact with hindsight. But like for them, they are literally in a war zone trying not mm -hmm. to die. Sometimes, say this about sometimes, any other movie. sometimes yeah. things mm -hmm. just slip your mind. Yeah. Like why didn't Doctor like why didn't Doctor Strange just decapitate <laughs> the portal or whatever? It's like <laughs> he just didn't think about it. He was in the middle of a fight. He was just doing yeah. what he could. No, in Infinity but he War, why did, all the, why did all the Wakanda Avengers attack Thanos one by one? Why didn't they attack him at the same time in Infinity mm -hmm. War? It's like because Cause, movie. It's like because they were trying. They were just in the moment. Like they're not coordinating. They're just they're desperate. They're just mm -hmm. trying to stop him. Mm -hmm. It makes complete yeah. sense. Like if you think that you were going to be in a situation and you're not going to make a dumb mistake like that, you're wrong. You would. Mm -hmm. You'd slip up. No, no, I'm just perfect. Absolutely. I would have got it. Why, why didn't Thor aim for the head? Because he he wasn't thinking. 
he was he thought he had him. That's all. Yeah. Why didn't Ant Man? Yeah. I mean, that's you what Infinity know. War is all about, is them screwing up multiple Why times trying to take him down. Why didn't Ant-Man butt? <laughs> yeah, that made it an instant <laughs> zero. Instant, I mean, he probably no. thought of it, but... No, they definitely... It was like, ah! Oh, yeah. Phil. And Scott. Very unpleasant. Also, someone audibly said, ha! Really loud when Thanos snapped his fingers and it didn't work. And that was hilarious. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> that was a great that moment. A I was like, I'm glad, moment. I'm glad this, uh, this I guy, am yes. inevitable. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, kind of like a, such a satisfying sound, too. Just oh, yeah. a little clank. The hollow <laughs> clank. I am inevitable. Like, it's just a prank. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. It's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> I am Iron Man. <sighs> Uh, Nor Norway was in this movie as well. That's cool. Indeed it was. I, I yeah, bro, they showed your house. In the... Oh, that was like the ugliest looking scene. <laughs> really? But like, I don't know if anyone else got this. You guys probably didn't get in this theater, but as the, that scene opens, right? And it just says Asgard, and then it just says under there, Tunsmetic. When, when that little, like, just normal Norwegian town pops up, the entire theater laughs out loud because it's just the most <laughs> random, normal, nothing, nothing weird happens. Just like a it's random. Random. It's, yeah, so it's, it's just kind of, yeah, you know, it, it would it's be like if some, some random farm town in America pops up on screen. Yeah, yeah. You know, it would it would be like so like uh, it would be like oh the dark castle of darkness and then under it just says Ohio. Yeah. That's the kind of <laughs> that, you know that's, that's the kind of, for Norwegian audience. I thought that was neat. I that's that's that was awesome. Really that's funny. Yeah, that's it was really, really cool. Funny. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the so, insight, bro. Very peaceful, nice little town. You know. It's, yeah. It's just a. It's just a. It's just a train so, ride from here. Just, yeah, I love that Tony truly was, after all this time, the key to defeating Thanos because yep. he's the one that built them a new gauntlet. He's the one and figure that time trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah time if had Tony travel, died in like, Infinity War, it would be over. Yeah, yeah. Doctor so Strange knew. Really cool, and it's cool to see that Doctor Strange didn't really con contradict himself either. I like yeah. that they really paid attention to that when he said, um, "You know, I'll let you die before." He had uh, one Doctor lot of dialogue in the movie, didn't he? Doctor Strange straight up own. Harry potter like Dumbledore'd Tony Stark. <laughs> he ra like, yep. raised him to die at the right time. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Can we... Can I briefly go over some of the controversies with this movie and why I don't think they're, I guess, valid or... There's like three that come to mind. Hulk dabbing? No, that's kind of my... <laughs> okay. That just kind of falls in the best day. Day. Oh, I don't right. care. People need to get over like the the whole like oh it's cool to hate dabbing thing. It's kind of it's. it's I just cool. think it's nobody, just nobody just cares just at this point. Dabbing, so. Yeah, well, I, I, hating dabbing is worse than dabbing. Yeah, people people aren't going to uh you know too crazy lengths about that. It just kind of falls into the other you know Marvel humor discussion. The three big controversies are number one, people don't like what they did with Thor. We already discussed that. Uh, a lot of us think it was fine. Number two is people, this is the big one that people keep coming back to, is Cap's ending and whether or not it is character oh, assassination. Boy. And I want to briefly address this because there's two routes to take, one of which is talking about the logistics of time travel and the other is just the spirit of his character. But I have a few points to say about it. People feel that it's very out of character for Cap to have gone back to the past to live out his life essentially with the curse of knowledge from the future you know, knowing what's going to happen in life, both in terms of large-scale world events like 9-11 or wars, but also smaller-scale right. personal events like Bucky being brainwashed or Hydra being inside S.H.I.E.L.D. while he's married to Peggy, who's director of S.H.I.E.L.D., and not telling her. And I imagine that that was something that Cap had come to terms with um, going into the past, was that he had like this conflict of should I shouldn't I mm -hmm. but the whole point of that scene was to show that he finally decided you know what I'm gonna focus on me for once yeah and like here's my thing about this and people are comparing it to Luke from the last Jedi uh as terms of a complete character betrayal the reason Which why it's not people, that people are wrong about that too wow. yes uh the problem with the last Jedi like I would have been fine if Luke had you know 
forsook his past character. I just wanted to see what led him to make right. that choice, which the yeah, last Jedi the, did not it was show. The execution um, of that, that they a they did yeah. very botched like flashbacks and very poor reasons. But the journey that Cap's been on, him and Tony have they've almost swapped places. Like back when he was they were fighting in Avengers, Tony is the one who laid down his life and made the sacrifice play to save the world, and Cap is the one who took Tony's advice from the end of Age of Ultron and decided to actually have a life for the first time in his life his entire life has been dedicated to fighting wars being a soldier helping his country helping people when all said and done and the day's saved cap takes a little bit of time to be selfish and pursue some personal happiness does that assassinate his character no. absolutely not that is character development and i think what people aren't realizing when they criticize it is development does not always have to be I say positive, not to say what Cap did was negative, but I guess just in the sense of being altruistic, development doesn't always have to just be going higher and higher. Sometimes you can flip, sometimes you can regress. Like Thor's arc is a complete regression. Yeah. He's you know learned his life. He was super immature. He grew up. He needed to take responsibility because for his people. Thor had his redemption run already. Like yeah, and now and Thor is going back. Now Thor is like so different ways. Now Thor's like abandoning his people to go screw off with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Why? Because it makes sense. We've seen how he's got here, and he's yeah, we understand why he's Cap. doing it. Cap, yeah. he's done this. We've been in how many movies with him? Of him just like putting everything before himself in this final hour. And, and takes... Very obviously hating literally every aspect of it the entire way, too. Always constantly yeah. being super depressed and never happy with what's going on in his life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So It, it makes sense. I think people are being a little uh, too hard on that where aspect. He was like, you know, 70 years ago, I froze in the ice and missed my chance at the love of my life. Like, that part was like, oh, that's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's like the number one thing. Yeah. I'm pretty lukewarm towards the movie as a whole, but I really liked them ending on them just dancing. I really felt that like is, yeah, yeah, that was yes. I really felt like that was, I was that. yeah, I was like towards the end I was just like, okay, yeah, we get it. It's the ending. What is like the, the end scene that they're gonna cut to? And I, I it was a very that's the thing that even I've picked on is just like, oh, he never got that dance and he finally mm -hmm. Got yeah, that. Actually, yeah, and that, that was a nice bit of... of closure. I I love that even that they if... ended on that shot. In the end yeah. of the first Captain America movie, like the last thing that Cap says is that he had a date, and yep. he finally like th that was set up from his very first movie that he wanted to go back. Hundred percent. Which is so. I'm so like well I'm done. totally fine with Cap's character arc. I think yeah. it's hundred percent wonderful. Thor's. Not as much, but not because of this movie, just because his first two movies were kind of not great. It's really just Ragnarok and this movie, which have essentially reset his character back to Thor 1 levels, just with some life experience. So now hopefully they can take him and run with him in the future. And uh, Tony's arc is basically perfect. So when you look at the movie, really the other way to address the Cap problem is him stopping world events could he even do that or did he even do that because of say it with me everyone time travel logistics <laughs> and this is the big conversation which i don't know how much we want to actually talk about because we are already at the two hour mark oh, but geez. there's a lot of controversy about one, one and a half. not so much two hours like one and a half yeah. yeah there's a lot of controversy about how time travel in this movie works a lot of people are saying it does not make sense a lot of people aren't understanding, completely irregardless of which side ends up being right, because I know, you know, Vara is his take, a lot of people have their take. The point, I guess, is no one really seems to be able to figure it out, which could be a fault with the movie if you want to go that route, that they didn't do a good job explaining it. Reddit is just chock full of dozens of threads and posts of people, you know, saying, is this multiverse theory? Is this a causal loop? Is this... You know, time is relative to your own fate. Is this whatever? How can Cap be on the bench at the end if he went back in time to live his life? What happened to, you know, Alt Loki with the Tesseract? And we've had a few discussions off air. And I was wondering if Var, you could give an abridged version, kind of like what you wrote down, of your logic. Here. Well, can I just uh, say something sure. about Cap first? Uh, yeah, if, you, if, if he goes back in time, whether or not he's in a different timeline or if 
people want to believe that he went back in the prime timeline. Stuff is going to happen in the world regardless of his involvement. I think he was confident that since there's another version of him already in whatever world that he's in, he'd be able to take care of it. I don't think he had to get too worried about like, oh, what if I... That's what I was saying in. as well. Yeah, I agree with that point. It's like even... I So Meso is right in the fact that it makes sense for the character. It's not character assassination because this is obviously what he would want and would do. It makes sense within the character. And also in conjunction with that, there is another Captain America who is going to save the day. That's already set in stone. So the fact that this Captain America is deciding to retire is completely fine because the day will still be saved regardless. Now you could obviously make the case like, well, he could save it sooner and save some lives maybe. Save but Bucky. Like, but like he he knows it's all going to lead to somewhere positive. So yeah. it, it makes more sense for him as a character to just decide to retire and live life. Yeah. And unfortunately people part of life is death so <laughs> death it is kind of just death like is inevitable a, a fact of reality yes indeed so you can't save every single life no um but yeah so in terms of the time travel i think i've got a pretty good grasp on it um the the main premise behind the way time travel works in this film is that it's rejecting a lot of the a lot of the tropes and the way time travel works in pretty much every other time travel based movie. It is a form of multiverse time travel, but it's a bit different. It's being kind of like um, explained in a, in a bit of a different manner um, because essentially you have different timelines and they can kind of branch and become different things but as far as my as far as the film's like explanation of it there really is only one timeline that matters and the one timeline that matters is the one that you are in so yes. every any other timeline any other branch any other op, like any other possibility does not exist does not exist exactly it's only the one that you are in so let's think about it this way i actually think hulk explains it perfectly like i don't think there's a better way to explain it he, he's like all right you can't change the future because if you travel to the past that past is no longer the past it becomes your present and the future that you left behind isn't your future it's your past right yeah so Instead of thinking of it like a bunch of timelines that are branching out like a tree, it's only one timeline, and you're just taking pieces and moving it forward. Time is always going forward, and sometimes you can pick a piece from the end of the timeline, move it to the beginning of the timeline, but no matter what, you're still going forward through that line. Um, so it's always one timeline. So when you go back in time to, say, 2012, The Avengers and you're messing about in that world, you don't have to worry about seeing your past self and affecting the future because the future already happened. The future that you left happened. No matter what, you still retain your memories because the current 2012 that you're in isn't the past. <laughs> it's the present. So instead of thinking of it like you're traveling to the past really all you're doing is traveling into a memory it's like a picture like a like a yeah, recreation yeah, like a recreation you're of what the past to was someone else's present or like a save state in yeah. a video game <laughs> right so mange actually made a very very good comparison that i think is the perfect way to look at it cuz you you can observe this is why i think this time travel is the most realistic um example of how time travel would would work in real life is because you can ob observe this by um like going to a video game and as you're playing through the campaign you make save points during important moments so like yep. kingdom hearts for instance there's boss battles you want to replay those boss battles you make a a save before the boss battle fight the boss and continue playing the game later on if you want to go back and replay that boss battle you can go to that save point and play the the, uh, the boss battle but here's the thing no matter what you do, 
when you go the to that save point progress is still there <laughs> when you go to that save point to battle the boss it's going to be a different scenario than when you originally battled the boss even though it starts from the same point it's a new reality it's not the same situation but just because you're battling the boss and something's different something different happens doesn't mean your one yeah your 100% save point later down the line changes it's still its own thing it doesn't get affected by you battling the boss again in your save point that's how time travel works so you can in fact let's say you make it to uh, the end of the game and you realize you know i kind of wish i had spent some time actually gathering resources to get the ultimate weapon to beat this boss because i feel a little underpowered but i feel like it's too late now to do it in my current save so i'm actually going to go back to the save point before the ending so that i can get the new weapon and fight the boss that way that's basically what they're doing in in game when they go back and get the stones they're just going back to a previous save point and doing it differently all just epic, epic gamers so yeah. Loki yes. is yeah. and this so this you. does bring up the question of what happens um, to those different saves. Do they is is there any sort of continuation? Or do Nothing they happens freeze as soon. They, as they stop they once. So once you leave a time, it ceases to exist because once again, mm. time is relative to you. The only timeline that matters is the timeline you are in, right? So. I'm getting a call from Belleville, North Carolina, wherever that is. I'm getting a call from Wonderful. the past. Um, <laughs> he answered the phone. It's like it's me, and he's like, "Am I too soon? <laughs> I'm too soon." <laughs> no. Um. So yeah. So like it's everybody's like watching asking, a ball roll down a hill, but it's not leaving a trail. Right. So think about it this way. Think about it this way. You you travel back to a previous save where you're about to fight a boss, and in that fight you you you're you're bringing the boss down to its final hit point right you need one hit on that boss to beat it but then the boss activates its worst move right the one move that you know is going to kill you and you're going to lose the fight so then you pause the game and you reload the save well what happened to that boss fight nothing it stops existing it didn't happen so when you travel to 2012 and Loki steals the cube and teleports out of there and they leave, well, what happens to Loki? Nothing. It stopped existing. Nothing happened to Loki. That doesn't matter anymore because the timeline that matters is the one that you're in. Now in Loki's present, there's something going on. Like in that person's present, there is no Loki's present. That story. Well, yeah. But yeah, if you like, if you watch it from his perspective, if you're, if it, the movie's about him, right? So yeah, if him, the, something would happen. Yeah. So. The rules of this is that time is relative to the person, the individual, right? Yeah. So if the main character of the story is a Loki, and in Loki's perspective, he sees a Tony Stark that travels into his past, bumbles around, and drops the, the cube, and Loki decides to take the cube and teleport out of there, then yes, in his timeline, he now has the cube. And if Loki's the main character and that's the timeline you are in, that's the main timeline. Yeah. So what would so you, um, I mean, I do like my save file theory. That's like my best explanation of the time travel that <laughs> where like 99% of it makes sense. But um, what, what about the ancient one and returning the stones to like close mm -hmm. the uh, brand quote unquote branches? How does that, how does that fit in or does it fit in? So, this I was I was actually arguing with AT about this, um, and to me this is pretty clear, but I guess it isn't because I, I didn't really understand what point he was making, but apparently it doesn't make sense. But anyway, my explanation for this is that the Ancient One is trying to explain why she can't give up the Time Stone because she believes that once Bruce Banner takes the stone and leaves her timeline there's no guarantee that she's going to get the stone back. Therefore, she is screwed, and her timeline is screwed. But this can be... Um, but, uh, da -da 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 -da. Although I kind of confused myself. I don't second. know. The kind of vibe that I got is that if you go back and you take the stone, it like creates a permanent 
alternate timeline. Like, I think a lot of people think that as soon as they no. return the stone, it closes this alternate timeline that existed, basically. I think that's what a lot of people are thinking that was said in the movie. Yeah, because they said in the end, like, they had to return the stones, but technically they wouldn't, right? But they're just trying to get the stones out of I think they do have to return the stones. I think that was explicitly said numerous times. To headcanon otherwise that they don't is... Mm. There's nothing to support that. Yeah, they do have to return the stones. Um, I'm I'm trying to remember what the quote was as to why they need to do that. There's the... It was the ancient one talking about branching paths. Mm-hmm. And right. Bruce was like, well, we return the stones back to the moment they were they came from, then that would close off the path. And they even showed the diagram of like mm-hmm. the path closing. Right. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So her concern is that if they take the stone and don't return, then she's screwed out of her timeline because that means that Bruce is now in his own timeline with a stone where she is in her timeline without a stone. But if he just comes back and gives it to them, or to her again, then it's still the one timeline. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. So I'm not sure if that's like completely consistent uh, mm-hmm. with what they were saying, but I, I guess the idea is that in this temporarily made uh, timeline, if they return the stone then it would event some people did believe that it would eventually correct itself into becoming the main timeline basically even if like minor changes happen then it, it will still like eventually turn back into being the main timeline right. but, but again, i i, I still feel follows like traditional yeah i still feel like that that's that doesn't follow the conventions that they set and i'm I, just trying I, yeah, i'm trying to understand what the problem yeah because here's here's the thing so the rules are you you can't change the past because the past is your present, right? Mm-hmm. Meaning that no matter what, even if they were to return the stones, it doesn't actually change anything. So I'm not actually sure that that actually seems to be kind of inconsistent with what they even say in the movie. So I'm yes, so I'm, I'm inclined to. I'm inclined to thing. believe that the ancient one and to an extent, Banner are kind of wrong on the subject, and there's kind of like things mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. discredit them, like because she realizes that she's possibly wrong. Well, okay, and then Ban- uh, Banner doesn't have the best idea, like best grasp right, of so quantum physics. I-, I wrote down the rules of the- of how this works. So let me read out the rules real quick. Right. Ba- based off of what is said by Banner at the start about how time travel works, when he explains that your past becomes your present. The future becomes your past. Based off that, that is how I formulated the rules of how this time travel works. I wrote this down. So, the first rule is that time is linear. No matter what point in time you're, you jump to, you're, you're never truly going backwards as time is always moving forward. This is because, rule two, time is relative. Time changes only to be the individual, or only to the individual, That is perceiving the change. As such, rule number three, for the individual multiverses do not exist concurrently. The timeline you are currently in is the only timeline that matters. Meaning, four, your actions in the past cannot shape the future you left behind. That future is now in the past. So the accidental triggering of the events that would set anything in motion, like the Terminator, are not possible. As such, Five, you cannot travel back to the future from whence you came. Even if you allow everything to play out exactly as it did previously, it will never be the same reality from before. Uh, Right, so Cap throws a monkey wrench in everything. As such, six, the events of your past are set in stone. The memories of the battles you fought and the loved ones you lost are never going to change, even if you move into a reality where where they never happened. So, Black Widow died. And she always will be dead, even if they move into a universe where she doesn't die. The, the one that you knew is dead. Yeah. Because of this, seven, you cannot accidentally erase yourself from existence like Back to the Future, as the events that kept you alive have already happened and cannot be changed. Which would also mean eight, the you of the past is not you, it's a different person entirely. Yeah. And they, they demonstrate that through Nebula killing herself. 
Exactly. So the thing with the thing with the um God. the ancient one. <laughs> Who is the ancient one? The freaking wizard. No, we're not getting into that. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, she was neat. It's I never saw Doctor Strange, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's a wizard. So here's here's the <laughs> she's thing. She's a wizard, so, Harry. The, the 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 thing that doesn't make sense is that Bruce is expl- Bruce takes the stone from the ancient one and goes back to the future. But the problem is that that means now that the ancient one he talked to is in the past. You can't change the past, so he can't actually go back and give her the stone. Because he took it from her, and that's in his past. So the best that he can do is go into a memory of the past and hand her the stone and go back to the future, but that doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't change anything. Just like how Thor can take the the hammer from one timeline and go to the other without changing anything, because that doesn't mean anything. He just took a hammer from a memory. Well, mm-hmm. so you Kinda. don't actually need to return the stones. It doesn't actually make any sense. I don't sense know, that, quant- that, that quantum that. GPS thing I'd imagine would take them back to that specific instance of what happened before, but I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, like, here, here's my thing with this movie. Because they this do discussion. return to their reality, their original Either reality. way the cake is cut, there's a problem. Either with Cap or with the stones or whatever. There's something that's inconsistent. My only thing is that if I had to reason out what that was... What's more likely that the Russos made an error in explaining all this, and maybe there's a plot hole that's created, and this whole like explanation doesn't necessarily hold up, or their entire risk reward climax of the movie is a lie? <laughs> yeah, they also might want to just get rid. I of I think the you have stones. to return the stones because that's the entire point of the movie. Well, they don't. If, want you, if that if that's a lie, that destroys the plot of the movie. No. The, the point of the movie isn't to return the stones. That premise was only brought up by Banner to get the stone. And then but carried that, out by Cap in his final act of his character arc. It's the right, point of the but, movie. That, but that... The, no, it's not the point of the movie. It's the point of Captain America ending his arc. That's all. It's, the, the movie isn't about returning the stones to the past. The movie is about getting the stones from the past to the, fu- uh, to the future. That's the point of the movie, to beat Thanos. It's not the, the, whole, the whole final battle was revolving around playing past the gauntlet. You say keep only it away to, from Thanos. Only, I say only, time travel. Only to get it, only to get it away from Thanos, so that he doesn't undo the snap that they just did. Yeah, that's the only reason. Mm-hmm. No, I think it was definitely about preserving the uh, the multiverse thing. No, that's why they made a beeline. He, 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 he would have no, used it to do the snap of Thanos. Because Thanos snapped too. Like he was going <laughs> to do it. No, he, you he wanted, was about he to, wanted to the, eradicate the van, all the life. The van was only important so they could get the stones away from Thanos. Yes, they needed that's to get it. the stones away from him. That's, mm, that's, I, did, I disagree. Because there are way more efficient ways to do that than the van. No, was like we discussed no. earlier, Doctor Strange can just do a portal and teleport. Well, how, how, how well they Thanos, wanted to put the stones if, back in time to get it away from Thanos. Yeah, if they just teleport it away from Thanos, then he still has a chance to get them. But if they and bring Thanos back can and, what? Just use the van to go back in time again. They Thanos. could destroy the van. You bring them back in time, destroy yeah. the van. Thanos can't get the stones. Yeah. Look, yeah. they reiterated numerous times that they had to return them to their proper timelines. Yes. We can we can split hairs. I, I, I understand. I understand that, that they did say that, but it, that's the inconsistency that we're talking about. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It breaks the rules that they established in their movie. That's why we're discussing this right now. I mean, I would say I would say that just makes the explanation invalid. Like none of what, aside from Bruce's things that he said, a lot of this that you've but, written down but, is extrapolated but, but, based on that. No, it's not. This, those were the words that he said. The past becomes, I mean, the, the future becomes your past, the past becomes your present. That's what he said. That was his explanation. Based on that explanation, the ending to the movie doesn't make sense. Well, the context of that was a, a specific, you know, reference to time travel tropes of changing the past and wiping yourself out of existence. Right, but, but exactly, though. That's the point, though. How can you wipe yourself out of existence? Well, you do that because you changed the past. Therefore, the events of the future can't happen, right? That's how that works. <laughs> That's how that works. So if you can't change – but if, 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 if he's saying that you can't change the future because you can't change the past – then bringing the stones to the past can't change the future. It's the same thing. Wiping yourself out of existence or unracing or 
erasing what you did because you didn't return the stones is the same thing. Now, if that's you create too thing. many branches, could it break the time space continuum thing? Like, no, if because if you're following like proper multiverse theory, there's like an infinite number of branches. Unless this movie is just well, destroying like, that very concept. They're like they're like, breaking it. Like, they're what, purposely yeah. breaking here, here's it. Here's the thing. And which is going to be really awkward when, movie, not if, when Marvel introduces the multiverse in the future. This is going to be very awkward. The movie makes sense up until the point where they need to return the stones. That's the only part that doesn't make sense. <laughs> and Cap. And yeah. Cap. Well, I mean, well, the Cap and returning the stones are tied in hand. Yeah, it's the it's the same thing. This, as far is, as far this begs for a rewatch. No, it doesn't. Mars rewatched it. I, I think it yeah. just doesn't make what sense. What this begs for is everyone to finally realize that you shouldn't do time travel that often in movies <laughs> because it never makes sense. Even this one, which is the best interpretation I've ever seen of it, it still doesn't make sense. Well, I think there are just it, multiple it people terrible. in movie that have different ideas of it. I would say Banner is not 100% correct, but a lot of what he said is confirmed by Tony, who does get it right in the end because well, the, they have a discussion about it and Tony like throws around the random words like oh you went through the eigenvalues you went through the Deutsch propositions blah 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 I he, he I think he knows much more than Banner on it I don't think Banner's <laughs> completely correct but Banner's but... right until no, no, yeah, the stones I'm, are returned yeah no, thing, I'm, I'm saying that we 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 I'm can saying observe the, the fact that I, I'm just saying we can the observe the fact wrong. that he's right in the movie though we can observe that he's, so, he's sort of you but... can't change the future because the past is your present, right? Cool. We observe that. Nebula kills Nebula. She doesn't. That's cease not to what exist. I'm. That's not what I. I don't. I don't have an issue with that part. It's the that... only reason they didn't change the future is because they returned the stones, and returning the power stone would undo Nebula killing herself. Bloody bloody blah. It's like you could BS so much out of this. You know, like sure Loki escaped. But the only reason that didn't change the future is because they went back and they returned the Tesseract before that, that happened, which closed off that branch. It's like, mm. I could just say anything, and it may I or may not like, be true, but I could I say I feel it. like mostly the end scene was more so just so that they could have like a very neat wrap-up more than anything. Oh, yeah. That that's my theory more than <laughs> no, anything. That, that, it was them that finding that, a way to retire that, Captain America. That, that's, that that's what I'm exactly. trying. That's what I'm trying to say is that that's the only part that doesn't make any sense. And the only reason it doesn't make sense is because they only added it so that Captain America could have a happy ending. That's yeah. all. He has this it's, a, it's it, just a plot vehicle. <laughs> it's not necessarily yeah, it, the logic. They of... broke they, they broke their own rules for the sake of giving Cap a happy ending, which I respect. Yeah, it's, it's everything the only... works before then. And it's the, it's the, the only part thing. that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. yeah, that that's what I was trying to get at is that it, it the logic holds literally all the way up until that very moment. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the moment, moment. Yeah, everything else in the entire universe is completely logical in every sense up until no, that very moment. This this time travel discussion is logical up until that moment and the ancient one moment. That's what he's saying. Time travels whack. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just it saying, Banner, incredible. Banner's Banner's not entirely correct, just because they have the scene before Tony shows up with everything solved, where they send Ant Man through the van and he keeps transforming to his like old self, and then his yeah, young man. self is t- <laughs> well, no, but teenage that, that, self. But then, and then Banner's like, "What?" No, I'm just saying that he doesn't have the co- completely correct idea of how to execute it. Oh yeah, well, that, sure. Um, it's time it's travel. Good. It's traveling over think, the time. I think but my new goal in life is to here, a well, speaker the, the, for like the, schools. The, the thing, Meso, is that you brought up the ancient one as though it's a separate thing from the cat thing, but it's not. It's the no, it's the same thing, but they're very separate scenes. Saying the whole movie makes sense for you know two hours and fifty minutes of its runtime up until, up until the last scene. It's not. It makes sense up until the halfway <laughs> mark. Where but they th- that, set that up scene, something and then pay it off later on. That that scene only exists because it's setting Which up is, the capsule. You're right. You're completely right. Mm-hmm. But when I say that the whole you know the whole movie is about this, I don't mean like this movie synopsis reads the Avengers must return the stone to the past. I mean they <laughs> did a setup payoff. The cap thing isn't like a post credit scene. It's not mm-hmm. like yeah, something that's tacked on to the end. It's a part of the plot. It was established that the only reason the ancient one agreed to let them carry out their premise was, was because that? blank would happen. So blank has to happen for some metaphysical reason that our minds can't comprehend, presumably the destruction of reality as we know it, or at least the dooming of billions of people who would not just cease to exist because the timeline ceases to exist. Mm -hmm. Uh, There has to be some kind of metaphysical consequence. 
Um, and the reason I don't think like that's the inconsistency is because that's the premise. The Avengers taking the stones from the past to stop Thanos. Um, they didn't have to have that scene with the Ancient One. They chose to for a reason. <laughs> they could have just had it off Captain stones. America going back in time. <laughs> that was the reason for it. Well, either way, her timeline's screwed because Loki ran off with the stone in, in that case, specifically, of, about bringing yeah. it into harmony. In either case, there will need to be some clarification made, hopefully on the director's commentary, but hopefully sooner, once we actually get into having, uh, like, yeah. Entertainment Weekly interviews okay. about how this all makes sense. Yeah. To be honest, I, I, I get the feeling that there probably won't be any clarification. It's, there's there's just going to be hand-waving. It's like yeah, it's they're going to leave it to interpretation and never touch it again. I guarantee you that's what's going to happen. Well, that seems Doctor like Strange a logical really explain time travel. Please, no. <laughs> Seriously, like, this is going to be my year of vindication. This is going to be like LJ all over again. Just don't don't screw with it. You can try, and this is awesome, you know? We were reading these, like, Wikipedia articles about, you know, relative time and causality, and Haley was freaking out about how it, you know, destroys film theory. If you have to, about, like, regard, yeah. about, about following, you know, a person's perspective in the movie. And those are cool ideas, they really are. All this we're talking about are cool ideas, but it does not make sense from a literary perspective. Time travel rarely ever does. And wait the a minute. Is because people don't think it through. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Because it's impossible to think, think through. It's not real. Yes, but... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right. Let me, th let me, let me go back real quick. All right. Shoot. What, what part about Captain America is confusing? Th that ending. I just try, try to think this through a little bit. Um, I mean, multiples. The big one we keep coming back to is how is he back in his universe? All right. On the bench? I think we. I actually think we might be on a fallacy here. We're 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 thinking it, about it wrong, and it's we kind of overlook something that was obvious. And Tooth Dominoes just posted or <laughs> just pointed it out. The Captain America that left is not the Captain America that's sitting there. The Captain America that's sitting there is a separate Captain America that traveled into their timeline. Do you, th do you think it would be a different one, or do you think it would be the same one? No, it's a it's a different one. It has to be. Every single every single dip like we saw our Cap go away. This is a different Captain America, just like how Nebula is a different Nebula from the one that traveled into the, into the future. They're two different people, just like how this ca these two caps are two different people. Just like how the Captain America that traveled to 2012 is not the Captain America oh my in gosh. 2012. It's 2012 Captain America. So, he made it to their it, time. No. In this theory, the cap that is talking to Sam and Bucky would have lived his life with Peggy. Mm -hmm. Would have lived a normal life. He also survived Endgame. Also survived in game, but he's not the cap that went back to return the stones. That's no. what you're saying. Because when so he every... had no memory of meeting Sam Wilson. What, because he's a normal dude. He's not Captain America. No, what? He would have never met. No, like, I don't think that's, he did not have this not life experience. What? He no, lived out I, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. What? No, 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 no. When, when you leave the timeline, you have left the timeline. So <laughs> once Captain America leaves the present, he ceases to exist. <laughs> when Captain America enters the timeline, he exists in this timeline. And he absorbs all the memories of... No. Oh, because this stop. Captain America, the old Captain America, at the end of the movie, also survived Endgame. This Captain America also traveled to 2012 he also went to the future battled thanos he also survived in game and he also decided to travel back in time to live his life with peggy carter we are watching we are busy, viewing busy. the we are viewing the timeline that captain america where he where he lives his life with peggy carter after in game the in game that we are watching is is an end game in which the Captain America that is there survived a different end game. Uh huh. I mean, if if you what? take it back to if you take it back to the save file analogy, it's like if you started at a certain point and you did almost exa the exact same things, but then you did something else. Like it's a, it's a slightly, in this case, it would be a slightly different version of Cap in a different 
timeline coming over there to them, basically. I don't think there's enough evidence to support that. What do you mean? What, I, what, I, what I, I mean, there's nothing to mean, like, that's... It's kind of like... How, how, I, but, okay, <laughs> There, but we see that though. We we see, we see that we don't see any of what you just said. No, we see we see, in twenty twelve we see Captain America go to the past, right? Mm -hmm. And who is in that past? Another a different Captain, Captain America. America. So what if we say okay, Captain America goes to the past again, except in the seventies. Will there surely there will also be a Captain America that exists in the seventies, right? Who is currently frozen in time? Or not frozen, but frozen in in ice, right? There's sure. two concurrently existing Captain Americas, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So the Captain America in that timeline that traveled to the past to live with Peggy Carter lives his life. Meanwhile, there's a Captain America frozen in ice, who's then unfrozen. <laughs> who then becomes an Avenger, who then lives through all the moments of Infinity War, of Endgame, and does it all over again. And that's evidenced by 2012, and there are two co-current Captain Americas living. It's possible, but I am kind of skeptic. I'm very skeptical. I, I, I feel like... I feel there's like there's it, two of everyone. Uh, there, there's, right. lo there's logic to it, but it kind of destroys emotional investment. <laughs> that's what I'll say. But I think you you really have the time the for it. I, I I don't think that explaining it to where you it makes perfect sense would like you, it would it would never happen. That it's yeah, impossible you, to because time travel does not make sense. Any story it's in, you will have these head scratchers, and I can't not criticize it because if I didn't, I'd be accepting that it's fine. Uh, it's only fine if you are willing to say, okay, they did this, like X said, for the emotional moment. Yeah. If you, if you can get behind that, if you're like, you know, if you're like Haley, who just loves their last that. dance, I don't care. I am, if then I you don't care, that's fine. that time travel is beyond our comprehension. Yeah. That's fine, then. So, time travel is wacky like, no matter this what, movie, I feel. This if you can't make sense of it, I don't think it's meant to be made not sense time out of it. It was certainly fun. It was very fan service. Like, this movie would not have been as amazing as it, as it was if they had not had used time travel. The whole middle section just, we would have lost so many good cameos in moment. <laughs> I'm wondering what he's typing because I'm curious okay. what he has to say. But, Bring it, man. I mean, Save the us. one thing that I'm thinking is just like a tiny bit of film theory is that at the very end of the movie, we jump into the timeline of Captain America. Like, we're not in, we're not like looking at everyone's, we're only looking at one specific timeline one specific uh subjective person and that's captains like see i don't we're not in sam's or we're not in bucky's we're just i don't agree moment. with that because but, then the but then what's the point of uh whatever the stuff for cap or sorry sam and bucky afterwards because that's going to be focusing on them in the main timeline but yeah but just for that moment but then that but wouldn't really but then he wouldn't have the positive. shield that whole captain america the new captain america thing wouldn't happen in the main he seems timeline. to hesitate to talk about his time in this timeline too. It's either because of the fact it's not the same cap, or just because he want to keep his precious life private. Both are certainly things you could headcanon. I think my yeah. thing, my thing would be it's a headcanon. Uh, it wasn't stated. I I thought of it as his private life because yeah, I, I did too. I, I think that makes sense, the most. Sense. But it could be the other way. Who knows? Could it, be not wanting to interfere with the timeline. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> you respect just... time travel too much. <laughs> Could be. It's just like, like the twenty the twenty twelve cap that they travel to. That cap is obviously not the same person as the cap that we watch in Endgame, right? We mm -hmm. we agree there that they're different people, yes. right? Yeah. But so, like, are we disagreeing in the sense that that cap in twenty twelve is didn't go through the same experiences as the cap from Endgame, or what? I'm disagreeing that that cap is the one talking to us at the end. I never said that that yeah, cap nobody, was the one nobody did. To us. He was just showing that yeah. it's proof that they can. I, be I was there giving at the you an example time. of that that there can be two different caps existing mm -hmm. at once. I think that if if the cap talking to us at the end isn't the cap that we followed in the movie, then the emotional resonance is like French toast. <laughs> That's I mean, kind of my point. I see. I don't agree because it's 
it's the same thing though. Like just because that cap is a different cap from the one that we saw go away doesn't mean that the one that went away doesn't do this the exact same thing. So the, like the, is really nice. the, 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 <laughs> the implication <laughs> is that Thanks, because bro. he travels back in time is the reason why he can sit there on the log old and have lived a nice life. So because of this cap being there, we now know that the cap that we watched in Endgame is living a happy life now. Mm -hmm. huh. And then we cut to a scene where Cap is dancing with Peggy. I, I just wanted to bring up the implication the... being that the scene where Cap is dancing with Peggy is the Cap that we watched go away to yeah. dance with Peggy. Yeah. Yes. Meanwhile, there is a Cap who is old in our current timeline. Uh, in in the just YouTube chat, in the exactly. YouTube chat, a guy has Ash said plot twist: old Cap is actually a scroll. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down for this. Bring it. <laughs> he was hired Honestly, to, for I emotional like... delivery. It, it's not that hard to to grasp what what happened here. Cap went back in time. He lived his life all while the rest of the universe took place. That's that's the short end of it. Like, uh, sure, I mean, don't think about it. It's I, I fun. <laughs> you are well, such a. <laughs> if he went back in time, you're right though. If he I mean, went, there's not much to wait, think about. It's, it's was... really there's not much to think about. <laughs> really, how about that? Right, you know what? On. Never mind. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. No, fine. If he goes back in time and changes nothing, everything should still go as it should. Correct. If he doesn't change anything, the timeline that is his present should not change. Yes, but his present Therefore, isn't isn't our there, current but, present yeah. either. His is different. When he when he leaves well, our timeline, his timeline is not the timeline that we are following anymore. And if it did, yes, it would break but, their own rule about pe past not changing the future because he would. He be wouldn't change the future because he wouldn't change anything. But he changed it by being the there. Because he's already there. But if he and no one knows that he exists, unless you nobody subscribe knows, to the yeah. causal loop, which yeah, that is the theory is, that yeah. Cap was always meant to go he back was and always be Peggy's to go husband. There. He doesn't change anything. Well, that doesn't, and that the reason why they think so cagey about Peggy's husband so is that because. Could, but it doesn't fit her own description yeah. of. I mean, yeah. in the show, I think people mentioned. Yeah, I guess so. What I don't like. On the show, it's but, just, <laughs> like if he changed but, nothing, and he, he could just, just say she got a divorce, divorce and then married the new cap. Like, <laughs> and I you could you you I could mean. say a bunch of things. You, you could. could say anything that made sense. The point <laughs> is, then you know they why didn't they left, say. You know why they let they didn't say it, Messer? Because it would take too much time, and it's not the point. The point, which I respect. Cap got his ending, and that's the end. I can get that. I can get, you know, emotional <laughs> resonance, but that, does not, that doesn't act as a shield from uh, from critique. It's just about your personal call, you whether you value you that can, or not. You can desire more of an explanation all you want. That doesn't mean it's absolutely necessary. That doesn't mean you have to overthink all this. It's just, it's, it happened. <laughs> Look, Overthinking is relative. I don't. You I don't say I overthink, but I think that you I, underthink. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think like if it's something that actually matters to you, then it's well within your right to want to point out how yeah. there should have been more of an explanation. I but I also guess, respect I, both I sides I and the cinematic that, experience. The time, I don't feel that it is as senseless as you make it out to be. I feel like it is. I, well, see, the, the thing is, the difference in opinion is that Meso is sitting here scratching his head and he's really annoyed at the fact that he's scratching his head. Meanwhile, I'm over here like, this is really cool scratching my head. I like being able to think. So for <laughs> I'm me, not annoyed. I'm ecstatic. This proves oh, me right. Stuff is 100%. <laughs> this is my year of vindication. Oh my God. Well, yeah, but you're ecstatic because you get, you, get, you get a chance to critique something. I'm ecstatic because <laughs> I get a chance to think about something. This is different. High five. <laughs> Duality. So for, for, for you, it's a, it's a net negative. For me, it's a net positive. But either right. way that negative leads to I guess you that's also what I defer to. it's like i don't relate at all to the negative. It's, a, it, it's just like the thor thing where it's like all right sure like you, you could probably point out how thor being fat the whole movie is kind of lame and, yeah. and it, mm -hmm. if it bothers you it bothers you but it doesn't bother me at all like at all so for me it's not a problem but it i guess like he's straight out of valhalla dude he looks which is why like the time travel thing bothers Meso a lot because he doesn't like thinking about time travel because it's confusing Right. Yeah, it's an yeah. impossible yeah. thing for us to uh, to mm -hmm. grasp. Meanwhile, it doesn't bother me at all. <sighs> so, fair enough. But I, I see. I like thinking about how it works. I like trying to think about the logic and figuring it out. Yeah. So, 
um yeah, for me and that's I'm, I'm with you there it's just it's the notion that oh you just can't make sense out of it at all that that's the part where i'm like okay well then i feel like you're just confusing yourself <laughs> i mean like, you say that but that's the concept of plot holes we've described two different plot holes up till this point either Cap sitting on the bench is a plot hole and can only be explained away with possibilities that weren't given to us. Yeah. Or Doctor Strange and not Doctor Strange, the Ancient One and Bruce Banner were wrong, in which case that's another thing that could only be explained by saying they were wrong, which we don't have the you evidence for because they well, said they were right. <laughs> maybe maybe it's a personal thing. Maybe I'm just having a hard time taking most of seriously because I'm still <laughs> holding on to the magic belt thing. Magic <laughs> belt is a sin and worse than time travel. <laughs> yeah, what no, is the magic good. belt? Maybe, maybe, no, Daddy, we're not talking about that. We're not you don't want to know. Talking about you don't want to know. I feel like if it was uh, anybody about else, else if it was okay. anybody else that had Meso's opinion, if you want to learn about that, actually, you watch your time uh, talking. You'll never escape me, Vin. I'll never I feel like because watch, it's watch the homecoming up, I just can't. I can't deal with okay. you. Um, but yeah, I, so I I think it all works until Cap says that because I I can even like say that the, the ancient one was just wrong and she said she was wrong. That's fine. Obviously, you can argue with me about that, but like I I feel like the ancient one scene isn't really that important in the long run. The only thing that gives that scene credence is the fact that Cap is now back and old. So if that scene wasn't in the movie, then the ancient one scene wouldn't matter as much, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. So it really, it, it really is the Captain America scene at the end that really ruins everything in terms of making logical sense, in terms of my understanding of how time travel works in this movie. Um, and for that, that kind of sucks. But I definitely do not. It doesn't really bother me. Is the thing that I come back to. It's like whatever. You want to know the great irony about this whole conversation? What? What? In April 10th, 2018, the Russo brothers did an interview and said Endgame would be their last movie unless Marvel wants to make a story called The Secret Wars, in which case they would come back to direct the Secret Wars movie. And for anyone who doesn't know what Secret Wars is, the Secret Wars event began in 1984 and saw Marvel heroes and villains duking it out in a place called Battle World. The most recent version of this event combined various alternate universes and was a major turning point in the history of Marvel Comics as it combined various branching timelines into a single universe. Okay. <laughs> They're setting Which I it find up. Super interesting. Not necessarily <laughs> setting it up, but the Russo's vision of what they want to do and what kind of stories they want to tell involve. No, no, like I, don't, I don't mean Marvel back. setting it up. I mean, He's the Russo brothers are opening that door to themselves to be able to Maybe. do it, if they could do it. Possible. Uh, who knows? But clearly, they're really into this kind of thing, so... Maybe also, in the future. Big, big Thwomp just said he let everything happen, and the world was nearly destroyed multiple times because he wanted to be happy. <laughs> but, but that's not true. Because Captain America saves the day, and he knows Captain America saves the day, so the world was never nearly destroyed at any point. <laughs> so, just saying. He's operating under the uh, could have happened sooner thing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He could have saved the Dave sooner, but the world was never in danger. Like, if he'd saved Bucky, then Tony's parents would have been alive. And... Yeah, well, I mean, his Tony's parents are dead, so why, what does he care? <laughs> I don't think he needs to go <laughs> out of his way to radically to alter the, the timeline. If he did anything to change the future, then he wouldn't have appeared at the lake. No, don't. You're bringing it back. No, just leave it there. Because <laughs> yeah, that deep. doesn't make sense. <laughs> That doesn't make sense at all. That doesn't you're make sense for the prime timeline. In a completely different timeline. I appreciate you, Vin. He is in a completely you'd, different timeline, though. He'd be in though. his own different timeline. Yes. He already is, though. He already is. He appeared, he appeared in the timeline this is why it doesn't. This is why it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Vin, you, you, you killed it, man. You killed it. <laughs> <laughs> this is just suffering. We've been point. living in Cap's alternate timeline the whole time. What this is, though, is that it is a different timeline, but it's not that different of a timeline. Right, sure. We've been um, in the timeline where we're right, back the whole time. I, 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 I think this, I'm really glad we this have dead, this chat. This, really glad this dead friends. horse has been beaten enough. I think I think Ven and I are on the same page. <laughs> yep. Or if it doesn't change anything, then we we're just live the entire MCU is just. That does, but that doesn't that make doesn't make sense. sense. That's, that goes rule. against with what they say in the movie. 
Now you're going back in time. Everything, everything the they say goes against yeah. itself in this movie. That, you know what? You know what? You know what? Mange, that's the best point that anyone has made tonight. You are absolutely right. We can't take anything they say in the movie at value because it, it goes against go. what they say. Exactly. Oh, sure. Exactly. You're, you're right. Yeah, we, we, I, can't, I can't hold Hulk. It's almost like, uh, it's it's almost like Missa said that the time travel rules are complete BS <laughs> yes for Morgan. No, you're, you're right. No, no, they'll steal by, this. By he, he, the here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Literally everyone says it differently. Tony Stark has his own theory. Hulk has his own theory. The Ancient One has her theory. It's all different theory. That's the problem. I'm I'm, I'm subscribing the Hulk's theory, but Hulk's theory doesn't make sense because the Ancient One's theory comes into play, which sense. also doesn't make sense because Hulk's theory comes into play when they travel to 2012. So none of it makes any sense. And everything it's they say just wrong. a theory, a time travel theory. In the end, we watching. just don't know. <laughs> we just don't know. It's I'm all sure there's wrong. a theory. I, 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 think, I would imagine, I I'd imagine some of what they believe. I don't have any faith. It's beyond our awesome. comfort. So anyway. Some, yeah, of, what, basically, some of what they believe is right. All, Literally, we're all but, wrong because we're all trying to make it make sense based on what characters have said. But I'm not we, wrong. I'm 100% right. <laughs> What'd well, you say, Ben? No, you're talking say, about, saying it's bad doesn't make it right. Make you right. It's bad because yeah. it's illogical. There is that no sense to make. No, I think being I illogical think there's a way to make it. Real, it's illogical. It's one day it could be real and it will be very logical, but we just don't know that yet. Correct. I don't like time travel in stories because it has a habit of monopolizing conversation. <laughs> we've talked about it now almost as long as we talked about the movie proper, and the conclusion we've come to is screw the rules. The rules don't matter because they make no sense. No, I would. I, don't I would like say that in stories. No, the majority. So the like ma rules because we don't understand them yet. The majority yeah. basis. Like no, we're, we're, the we're majority basis of the time that travel right. makes that sense. That is the conclusion that we made. Yeah. I'm so hungry, man. <laughs> yeah. sandwich? Is that sandwich? Dude, wait for uh, Spider-Man from home. I, I like the little setup. I just want to go to bed. Like, Can we talk about how contrived it is that all of Peter's know. classmates got uh, snapped no. so they how, could how, all be in the sequel? How, 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 yeah, how convenient! That's fake. Everybody, everybody related to Ant-Man all got snapped. Everybody related to Hawkeye mm -hmm. all got snapped. Everybody related yeah, that goes to school of Peter schools. got snapped. Yeah. Half the schools in New York got snapped. We just thought the MCU is now five years in the future. I hate that. Permanently. It's really awkward. Well, to me. I mean, we'll catch up to it eventually. Will we? Yeah. I guess if they do enough prequels, we will. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yes. And about in about we'll we'll catch up in about four years. Too. How about that? <laughs> they're not taking a break. There's, there's no way there's gonna be a break. Next year, right? And Black Widow and Doctor Strange too. Far from Strange home too. is in like two months. <laughs> yeah. Right. But far, I'm saying after Far From Home, there's not gonna be any more movies until next year. Like that's, yeah, yeah, but that's not a that's not. But really then they a break. also got like um. It's kind of a break well, when you consider that a Marvel out, movie has come out in pretty much every segment of the year for the past couple of years. And yeah, Marvel every year, every year Star has started with a Marvel movie. The middle has had a Marvel movie, and the end has had a Marvel. Yeah, movie. but like the, the the point of taking a break was that it would catch up to the five year time gap. But we're not taking a five year break. As yeah. Well, no, yeah. yeah, we are well, downscaling from three saying, movies like, a year to two at least for exactly, one. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. They're kind of they're slowing it down. I guess they're slowing the pace. Right, but we're still probably not going to catch up to the five year gap. So, yeah. Yeah. so I think I think they wanted to, they they wanted to get to a point where the the exact time it takes place is irrelevant i was kind of reading about that they don't they don't want it to care when it takes happy. place it's gonna make the timeline people so happy <laughs> yeah yeah anyway um, that that is, that is fascinating though we 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 talked all that only to come to the conclusion that it actually there are no rules to follow literally everyone's wrong in the movie that's pretty fascinating. Well, i don't know if they're <laughs> wrong i just don't think every, one of them is completely <laughs> right it's not Look, oh, that is really no, see, it's here's not the fascinating thing. at all. It's frustrating. <laughs> no, it's yeah, well, I know it's frustrating to you, um, so that's fine. But and the, the thing is, you you can't you can't be partially right about time travel and also be wrong at the same time. Like it, it doesn't make sense for Hulk to be right, or the Ancient One is also right. You know, like because those go they contradict each other. Indeed. So yes. that, that's what we're coming down to is that no matter what, <laughs> someone is wrong. But the, so problem, I really, uh... the, 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 the problem is that we see both of them proved right in the movie. That's the thing is that Hulk's theory is proved right by when they go 
to get the stones, but the Ancient Ones theory is right when they go to return the stones. Which means there must be some kind of ethereal, otherworldly POV that we can't wrap our mortal brains around that is right. I mean, it's all Actually, theoretical, we can, though. It's not, it's we can, not a because that, that ethereal, mortal, or immortal being that has obviously shifted this thing is named the Russo Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And it's like, that's very interesting from like a, uh, a thought-provoking standpoint about how time travel isn't a concept in our world, so of course, you know, it's whatever, but it's just, it, it's very hollow. When I watch a movie, I like there to be rules they have to be adhered to, and the characters have to find creative challenges. They have to basically challenge the rules and figure out creative solutions. I don't like, you know, discussing a movie's plot and the realization being... Eh? There's nothing, anything can happen anywhere because there are no rules that we can comprehend as people. That's not cool to me. But I respect that it might be cool to some people because it does allow for cool moments. So I get that. <laughs> Especially for, like, you know, emotional character arcs and resolutions. Yeah. Because it did have the cool cap arc. And I wouldn't have done it any differently. That was emotional uh, resonance and it had good parallelism, too. With the dance and the end of his arc. So it's whatever. I, I think it's completely justified. I think it brought the perfect moments that we wanted as far as a conclusion. Now concerned. I know why now I know why LJ isn't here. No, he, he <laughs> did he really didn't want to talk about this like in this kind of setting. He wanted to just enjoy <laughs> the movie without having some big like debate behind How long have we way. talked about time travel? Hour and a half, I think. <laughs> We we have been, Feel free we to have leave been, we have want. Been, want. Well, I can't just leave whenever I want. That's the problem. I need to go to bed. Yeah, well, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. So just I go say... to bed then, uh, X. What? What'd you say about it? Just go to bed then. <laughs> just, mean, go. Shit. just go. Just uh, go. Does anybody else have anything else to talk about with the movie? Or... I I don't know. The um, record breaking that's, that's doing stuff. right now. I that it got up. It could oh, yeah, hit a million dude. in this weekend. Yeah, it's gonna be really wow. successful. I, I hope it topples Avatar. I want Avatar this movie to crush so Avatar so into so the ground. I'm sorry, Avatar is a movie Avatar. that does not deserve <laughs> anything. That, most forgettable movie. Yeah. yeah, I do not understand how Avatar managed to be as big as it was. It's so crazy, <laughs> dude. I mean, uh, Gamora's actress. She's gonna be pretty happy though. She's gonna be in like three of the top five ever mo highest oh, grossing yeah, movies. Dang. That is really cool. Oh yeah, huh? that is cool. She's a she is rich. She must yeah. be banking. <laughs> she is she is rich. <laughs> well, <laughs> like... I mean, if they were if they were getting like a percentage cut from how how well the movie does, then yes, they should probably be loaded out of her mind. But I believe Cap and Thor both got like fifteen million out of uh, acting Dang. for this one. Dang, that's crazy. Well. The, the time travel discussion has a tendency to like bring out the uh, you know the logical debates or whatever. Let, so let's let's not end it on that. Let's roll it back to the movie as a whole. At a hundred percent. That's what I was doing. Yeah, you tried. But about <laughs> You're not the host. Well, that, that's part of it. I mean, of course. Yeah, it's gonna beat out. It's already made. And also, I it beat host. every single. Record. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. But yes, <laughs> moving into closing thoughts, we can talk about. You know all this for a long time, but I don't think anyone is in disagreement that this was probably the best send off for the saga of the MCU we could have possibly got. Mm -hmm. It had every single facet wrapped up into one package. It had great action, heartbreaking character moments, hilarious comedy, references, you know, out the wazoo references to like almost every Marvel movie. If not every single if one. If not every one. They probably did it on purpose. Even references to TV shows. Mm -hmm. Every character got their due in some kind of way. It was immensely satisfying. And uh, I don't even know how to rank it. If we were to go around the all you guys and be like, how do you rank it? You don't really. And how far you give it like perfect, I, right? Yeah, it's a perfect movie. Um, it's I mean, a perfect like, movie. It is, honestly. Like, you can bring up all the flaws you want, but as, as far as my enjoyment out of the film, yeah. nothing, not a single thing ever took me out of it. There wasn't a and single I agree. moment where I didn't like it. So that is why it's a 10 out of 10 for me. I agree. On paper, we can point out flaws that are valid and, like, objective critiques or whatever, but they don't damage the whole. 
the yeah. hole is it's like all, all perfect those, for what it needed to do yeah. all those negatives led to a net positive for me so as far as i'm concerned those negatives were just positives it's a yeah. success it's a success story yeah i can't believe this uh this actually stuck the landing i was very nervous i won't lie I was always very nervous that they would buy oh, it. Oh no, like, it's actually movie. sucking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or like, I don't know, Captain Marvel would just one punch Thanos right at the end <laughs> as I climb back. <laughs> like, <laughs> or uh, I don't know, no yeah. one would die. I don't, I don't know. I mean, in, in terms of enjoyment, them. yes, it was like maximum enjoyment, but on a critical uh, level, like just the, thinking about some of the logical decisions of the characters and like where it would line up time wise. And stuff. I think the movie is not perfect, but it's definitely got a decently high rating for me. It's definitely it's in like tricky my to top judge it tier. as a movie because it relies so much on, on what came before. And I don't mean like someone watching this without watching the other movies. Just the things this movie does really right, it couldn't have done without in, without an Infinity it, War. It, it's hard to see it without your emotional investment in it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Which is really the beauty of the MCU. It. It's yeah. a it's such a unique kind of a property. Um, and I'm really glad that they were able to ride it out and have all these building blocks kind of build on top of each other yeah. to take us to this moment right here. The success of Endgame is an even bigger success for Infinity War. It can mm -hmm. prove what yeah. that plot can do. The movie too. was big. Oh, yeah. Having to introduce their best villain in the penultimate team up movie. Mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, dude. Good luck. <laughs> but they did so it. Good building them up. They pulled it off. Even though Thanos did turn into, yeah, I'm just gonna kill everyone in the world right at the end. <laughs> I mean, but I I can I can understand that logic train. I mean, I'm 2014 Thanos is not my favorite villain, but I can get behind like his uh, change in logic compared to 2018 mm -hmm. Thanos, especially yeah. after just like just how completely annoying the Avengers have been. They just yep, like he's just like I I have literally succeeded. And now you guys have and gone guys back in time. Still here. You're, you're, you're not. Please. You're not grateful I, I, after all. Time to wipe <laughs> you all out. Not only am I going to kill you guys, I'm killing everyone just because you were that. And then I'm gonna make a new I, universe. Yeah. And all I, I can't stand it. I can't. Mm -hmm. I just can't. Yeah, the, I, I get it. It makes sense. It works totally. <laughs> so, all in all, well done. Endgame yeah, was fun. Well done. <laughs> Endgame was fun. <laughs> in the end, time travel makes sense. Like I just can't right. comprehend it because you're not smart enough, man. So sorry. No, I, I, I still, I still <laughs> feel like the, I don't know what the save file thing, multi, many world theory explains most of it, but not quite all of it, and it kind of, re, it kind of reduces the stakes of the movie. Definitely the time yeah, heist. Just dominoes. We were talking about the I mean, in Fortnite earlier. <laughs> as great. far as as far as I'm concerned, the stakes are kind of thrown out the window. Yeah, the, 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 the stake the stakes are only brought yeah. up. The the time travel stakes are only brought up to be part of you know cap like, as we said caps like plot vehicle to bring him closure. Yeah. So, but I don't know. oh well, either way, maximum enjoyment, Not great send off. It was a great yeah. movie. Very happy with it. Um. I'm extremely happy with send that. Off they could do mm -hmm. for the MCU. And at this I point, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that there wasn't a post credit scene or anything that built up yeah. to like whatever comes next. Because now yep, this was an ending. Successfully yeah. unsubscribe. If anything, it, it, yeah, <laughs> time to unsubscribe. Up, just to remind you bookend. of where it came from. Yep, the bookend was way better than a hint towards oh, the yeah. future. Even though people are very disappointed that there was no like X Men tease, but they said for they, months yeah. they weren't going to do that. Yeah. Where, where's my extra on. gag at the end? <laughs> yeah. uh, the Deadpool shows up right at the yeah, end. Just, oh man, I'm late. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> but no, that uh, I, pretty much going to wrap us up almost. What's up, X? I didn't like the movie as a whole. Go on. Okay. I thank you. Didn't know about the time travel thing at all, and there's parts of the movie that I liked, and but me as a person, as my opinion, I went into Infinity War with no expectations whatsoever, and I liked it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of characters interacting with each other, and it was cool to see. It was funny. It was entertaining. It was greatly paced. This movie, it just felt a whole deal just about having this huge again. That's what the movie felt to me. This huge but, again. This huge yeah, what? Just, 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 oh, just, just doing it all battle. over again? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, okay. a huge battle. I think I cut out there. Yeah. I just, like, a huge they just battle had, again. 
they wanted to have this huge set piece again. That's what it felt to me, and that's what I saw. But as a send off to Marvel characters. Uh, or Marvel fans, I, I do feel like it's a good movie because the time travel thing sort of helped in that way because you could sort of go back to the old movies. And I like that part, even though like I don't enjoy it that much myself. But as people who go into this movie and want to enjoy it, I could I could appreciate that for other people, if that makes sense. Like that was a cool send off that the way they did that with just going back in time. And so people could be like, oh, yeah, I remember that movie. I remember that happening. Yeah. So I thought that was neat. Better. Yeah. But I think I, I just I just really liked Infinity War, and I just didn't like this movie that much. I liked parts of it, but just as a whole, uh, I, I think it was just more so what I was expecting. Because I, I just wanted character interaction, funny stuff happening, I guess. I don't know. So... But it yeah. was funny. I mean, it makes I sense. Like parts, yeah. I, I like the parts of people it. People who got brought back never really got to yeah. do anything. Doctor Strange had one line yeah. of dialogue, you know. Mm -hmm. But then again, I, I didn't. I don't really know what I expected of this movie either. That's the thing. So I, yeah. I don't know. But I'm glad other people enjoyed it. And, and you're allowed I, to not like it. It was definitely yeah. in service of a gratuitous battle scene at the end. The only mm -hmm. reason why I'm fine with that, we didn't actually get one in Infinity War. If you look back at it, we got the cast split into two distinct halves one half of them fought Thanos the other half of them fought the nameless mooks in a pretty unclimactic mm -hmm. battle where it was mm -hmm. kind of chaotic and you couldn't really tell what was going on I think ultimately area. ultimately that's what ended up making an Infinity War not a perfect movie for me is because really like at the end of the day the one thing that I really need to see at the end of all of this all 11 years of this build up is everybody together fighting yep. the bad guy that's the thing yeah. that was missing from infinity war and that's what i got in this Rip movie that, vision. yeah that that's why that this movie is yeah well <laughs> the big thing i will give it credit for perfect. the biggest credit i can give it is what which was a big um the previous movie as well with infinity war is that i thought it was really good like very good pacing because I didn't. It didn't feel like it, I sat there for three hours, and I think that is an accomplishment in yeah, and of itself. A good point. I didn't. Feel, I feel like, like it was very good, uh, goodly paced. Can I even say yeah. that? No. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, was, good, it was pretty goodly paced. I will give credit. Did not for that. feel like a three-hour movie. Nope. Yeah. yeah, yeah really it really did. I've not, seen it yeah. twice, and neither time that I ever feel like. Yeah. It, it didn't drag at all. Three hours. It yeah. was. I didn't enjoy the movie as a whole, but I still felt it was worth yeah. going to watch if that I, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it does yeah yeah, yeah. It meant an experience yeah. the movie of our That's, generation yeah. you gotta watch movie it. of our generation yeah so the next generation will be like oh man i wish i had seen endgame when it came out in theaters mm -hmm. that's my uh yeah, yeah just watching the mcu on dvd and, or you know just home media and eventually getting to that point does not have the same uh yeah effect just think that watching it in the know. theater in Whatever five years, happened. everyone's going to know that this is Robert Downey's last um, movie as Iron Man because he dies. That that fact will be out, and people who are born will just know that mine is limited to these movies. 100%. We'll never have the, the shock of having him do the snap. And, uh, yeah, so. it's going to be tough watching a bunch of yep. MCU movies knowing mm -hmm. that there's no Tony Stark. Yeah. But, yeah. He's, he's so, really God, guys. Tony. Really good. So a huge, uh, I guess, like a huge praise to Robert Downey Jr. for holding this franchise because he really did. Hundred um, percent. And he, he's, oh, yeah. his life is just crazy now. Him yep. and him and um, Chris Evans. Like Chris Evans has also done so much. Yeah. Already yeah. I think, who was the one the who start. posted the picture that Cap has been in a Marvel movie every single year for the past nine years? Yeah. That's crazy That's, to me. Like every, every single year he's been in, in a movie. Mm -hmm. As cat, which is probably tiring for him. Well, I'd say, but tiring's a word. So I agree. And then, of course, to to Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow, we'll, we'll see her again. Yeah, rest in peace, Black, Black, Black Widow. Will, that, okay. Black Widow will the, return. Widow. <laughs> the last thing I will say about the movie is I did kind of feel bad for Black Widow as a character. I felt like she was kind of it, it made sense. Drafted. Yeah, <laughs> it, it made sense, and she did get her emotional journey um, in this film. But it does feel like she did kind of get the shaft and the fact that she's getting her solo movie after the fact Even feels kind of, kind of insulting yeah and she wasn't there for like the final battle yeah. so, yeah. 
I mean, it, it does feel a little a little disappointing. Uh, I see it more as point. like uh, compensation. Like they they already. But playing. that's the that's part of why it feels bad though. It's like oh yeah, sorry about that. Here's <laughs> some here's your uh, complimentary solo film to make up for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. To compensate for the fact I that you got agree screwed. They should have done the solo movie a long time ago. It makes no sense to have pushed it off this much. Yeah. Unless the, I, I guess in, unless on, the plan honestly, was always like, to make it a tribute you, type of deal. You know what would have been way current. better? How about we just skip Captain Marvel that movie and instead <laughs> have the Black Widow movie now? That would have been. Yeah, we didn't need awesome. to know anything about Captain Marvel in this movie. She could have just really been like Black did. Panther. Dude, my bit. My okay. If I had to make one complaint about this movie would be because of Captain Marvel. She had no interaction with Nick Fury at nope. all in this nope. movie. And that bothers the crap out of me. Fury didn't have a single like, line. They set it up, that whole movie. Mm -hmm. They have the post credit scene with Captain Marvel coming in. Like, where's Fury? Oh my god. Uh. And then the movie happens. Fury's back. You know who doesn't care? Captain Marvel. Yeah, they should have at least been standing next to each other yeah. or something. Well, they were. He well, came they, out. They, they were next yeah. to her. He came out like right behind her. Yeah, but, but behind her, but not next to her. Like, and she was like, standing by herself on the stairs. It makes the post credit scene from Infinity War feel weird because she didn't really do anything to tip the scales or be like a saving person. Really, she saved Tony's life, but that was. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't buy it, and nothing in her movie informed this movie at all. She could have been just like Black Panther, where he showed up in Civil War, basic understanding of what he's all about, yeah. power set, then developed later on, and a hopefully better movie. Uh, that would have, oh, been, would have been fun. Anyway. Anyway. Aside from that, personally, I love this movie a lot. Heck yeah, I can't wait to watch it like five more times. Yeah, rewatch is going to be fun. I'm looking at this poster right now, and I'm really hoping that in like a few weeks we'll get a different poster with like the updated looks of like... Bruce Banner as like nerd hole. Fat and Thor. Fat Thor. And haircut. I, I'll be honest. I don't know if I want a haircut poster with Fat Thor. Captain Marvel. Yeah. Fat Thor on a poster would be great. Dude, Fat <laughs> Thor with the two hammers. No, come on. Like, that dude. Would be awesome. yeah, that version of him would be cool. I died with Rocket City, like melted ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite part was at the very end when he was they like on the, the cliff. <laughs> when he was on the cliff talking to Valkyrie, like when they were at the funeral, I was like, "Shave your beard, man! <laughs> it's been how long? Why haven't you shaved?" <laughs> <laughs> they called Rocket a build but it's a so bear. nice and round. It looks so fluffy, like you could sleep on it. <laughs> All right, Ben. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. You need to look at that beard again if you don't agree with me. No, I, I saw it. It looked like it was a beard. It was a know. great beard. Looks gross. Yeah, it did kind of look stringy. Got it. Okay, well, you look stringy. All right. So thank you all very much for listening to this episode of the TTV podcast. If you have not seen Endgame and listened to all of this, I don't know what to tell you. What is, what is wrong with you? We try. <laughs> we tried a lot. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments section below is what you thought of the movie. Good emotional send off logic. Maybe you can crack the time travel egg that none of us were able to share your thoughts. Isn't it kind of fascinating that they reference Lebowski in the MCU, meaning that the big Lebowski yeah. exists in the MCU, meaning that the <laughs> guy that played Obadiah Stane <laughs> <That's great. laughs> also was in Obadiah yeah. Stane was a former movie. <laughs> <laughs> Tony nah. Stark was able to build this in a cave. With a box of scraps. Remember, okay, remember what the scientist said to him before before he died was to not waste time. Mm -hmm. And then saw that and almost cried I, again. I teared up. Yeah, yeah. Oh. it's good stuff. Good narrative good tissue. Job. <laughs> narrative anyway, tissue. Anyway, don't, don't waste your life, Stark. <laughs> Well, we'll see you all next week for another regular episode of the 2DB Podcast. There was so much this time we didn't even discuss. Like Faber's new picture, <laughs> like the Marvel Fatigue straw poll, but we'll do all that next week. And we can save that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Fa Faber's had like three episodes in a row. He can wait. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, stay tuned next week for another episode of the 2DB Podcast. No outro music this time. Oh, Sorry about that. Hold on. Do you got a shout out? Patron oh, shout out. Okay. Patron okay. shout out will be. I think this time I'll give it to Tooth Dominus. He was very <laughs> active Go in the chat. Yeah. Good insights. Good. And I appreciate Good theorizing, Neek. Um, also, a mm -hmm. shout out yeah. on YouTube in the super chat. I 
we got a two dollar donation from Adrian G oh. because oh, thank you. on Callan's video I made a sarcastic comment and he took me seriously and he was defending he was defending us. He he to me I he thought I said something antagonistic towards TTV and he defended us from me. Really? And then I was like, I'm <laughs> yeah. He was like, check their live stream. They said something recently. I was like, I know. I was on that live stream. <laughs> He's like, oh my bad, sorry Envy. So then he, uh, his uh, message today Aww. was, sorry Envy for the ca comment on Callan's video. It's all good. <laughs> oh, dude, no, yeah, good sport. Thanks are, for thanks um, for the support, bro. I appreciate you. I very much appreciate that. Thanks so Listen, much, sir. I, yeah, honestly, because it gets tough, you know, being criticized for criticizing G2 and also not being critical enough on G2. It gets, you know, it's, 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 it's very frustrating to deal with. And the fact that there was someone out there that was willing to point out how it makes no sense is like very, <laughs> or whatever, very nice. Whatever you said. It is, yeah, it's cool. Thank Good enough. You. I'm down to change. Just pick the critique. That's all. Yeah, I was like, people. <laughs> you can't blame us for both. It doesn't make sense. So, we'll see y'all next week for another exciting episode of TTV or Brickfade. Freaking ancient one saying that we hate G2. Meanwhile, Hulk is saying that we love G2. <laughs> 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 will, will, will we ever know who was right, though? Tune in no, next time. <laughs> we never will. Mid minute <laughs> drop hole. We just don't know. Mid, you made your straw pole. <laughs> yeah, that straw pole, man. You're you're a brilliant person, Ben. Thank you. Keep, keep being you. All right, we'll see y'all next week. I'm Meso. I'm Bar. I'm Ben. I'm Envy. I'm XX Trooper. And I'm Haley. Yeah. Well, we did. Farewell, everybody. Yeah. See ya. Have a good high five. Sweet.